Nope. Mr. Homicki. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Yes. Mr. Silver. All right. So we got nine of us, right? <clears throat> so we're all participating at this point. Application uh, 3.1, public hearing. It's application 1945-17-Z, the Borden. Would you be giving us a presentation tonight? Should we try and? Yeah. We'll get rid of this then. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Megan Hope. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Altern Pearson and Glastonbury. I have a PowerPoint, but it doesn't seem like the screens are working. So I did pass out paper copies. Um, so we can, I guess, just go through that, put the screens up. Here with me tonight is also Marty Kenny of Lexington Partners. He's the proposed developer. We have Mark Fertucci from Fuss and O'Neill, our project uh, traffic engineer, Corey Garrow and Kevin Johnson from Close Jensen and Miller, and also Matt Koenig, our architect from Barton Partners. At the meeting on May 16th, uh, it was continued to address the staff comments that we received in the form of three memos. One was from planning, the other was from the engineering department, and the final one was from fire. Uh, I believe on Friday you received a packet of the responses that we provided uh, to the town. Uh, so I just wanted to go through a few of the more substantive comments. A lot of the comments were uh, directed at uh, very technical things on the plans, adding notes, uh, darkening contour lines, things like that. So that's all been addressed and incorporated. Uh, the only things uh, that I wanted to go through tonight are just more of some of those substantive uh, items that were in those memos. So if you flip to uh, page five of the packet I handed out, one of the comments we received from Peter was uh, that he wanted some additional information on the solar carports. If you'll notice on the lower right hand side of uh, sheet five of your packet, that's the location of the solar carport. And if you switch to the next sheet, sheet six, we included a cross-section view of the carport, uh, as well as an aerial view of the panels. So uh, as you can see, we're gonna have uh, 18 parking spaces covered, so it'll be both sides of uh, the stalls, and it'll be uh, 15 feet, seven foot clearance on one side and about 13 and a half feet on the other. So we wanted to include those pictures to the commission. Sheet seven shows a perspective that we had shown at the previous presentation of the roof. Uh, all the area in black where you don't see any of the air conditioner units is where we've placed the solar panels for the roof. So if you flip to sheet eight, all the uh, blue areas on the top of the roof are where we're gonna put the solar panels. Those panels only project about six inches above the roof, so they're gonna be completely covered by the parapet, so you're not gonna see those from the street. We received another comment, uh, comment 14 from Peter, asking for information on the generator and the sewer lift. So I've indicated on sheet nine of your packets where those are located. And uh, included on the next page are just some details on the generator and also the sewer lift station. So we've provided those. Peter also asked in uh, comment 19, for some additional information on the restaurant and hair salon. Those are the two tenants right now that uh, we have been in discussions with. They're serious tenants. We can't uh, provide you with the name of those tonight, but we worked with them to create floor plans for each of those spaces. So on sheet 12 of your packets, you'll see the floor plan of the restaurant. It's got 15 bar seats, uh, 93 table seats, 77 of those are inside the restaurant, 16 are on the outdoor patio. Uh, our proposed hours of operation are 11.30 a.m. to close Monday through Saturday, and then 12.30 p.m. to close on Sunday. Uh, the restaurateur will be applying for a restaurant liquor permit with the Department of Consumer Protections. Um, and so because of that, we need to enclose the patio with a fence. So we've included a fence detail as well uh, that will be uh, enclosed that dining area outside the restaurant. If you flip to the next sheet, sheet 13, the hair salon space is proposed in the 35 
100 square foot retail space. We've included a floor plan uh, for that use, showing the reception areas, the hair stations, et cetera. So we've included that as well. The next two sheets were requested by the town engineer and also fire. They wanted to confirm that uh, both the WB50 and SU30 templates would work on the plan. So we've included those to demonstrate that uh, the way the engineers have designed the plan, uh, those trucks can flow through the site without any problems. Okay. So we submitted the packet that you received uh, with all our responses. We submitted on June 2nd. On June 2nd, we also received another memo from the town engineer. Where he had nine, I think, nine more comments. So we, uh, we wanted to respond to those to you tonight because we didn't have time to get a submission in uh, before the meeting tonight. The first comment had to deal with um, traffic. So I'm going to have Mark Vertucci come up, and he's, he'll go through Derek's comment and explain the discussions he's had with uh, OSA today. And then uh, we can move on to the remaining comments that Derek had. Good evening again. I'm Mark for two. Sorry. Um, the first comment on that memo, June second, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of it, I don't understand it. Staff did request that the applicant investigate the feasibility of reducing the overall length of the existing left turn lane. So what that one? Uh, would you show it on? Oh, what, what is it? Yeah, you know, it, it, next slide. If you, yeah. if you go to page 18, I think that's about what the, uh, the following page in your handout on page 18. Uh, oh, seven. Yeah, sorry. Page okay, I, I guess there was a slide uh, eliminated, but it says page 17 on your handout. Okay. Yeah. okay. And it's so the, the queuing line to Mill Street North. So yeah, that's this correct. So there is, uh, if you can see on there, there is a northbound uh, left turn lane on the Silas Dean. It's actually about 600 plus feet long, uh, uh, approaching the signal at Mill Street. Uh, um, yes, so, it is a long. It, so it, it, it's it doesn't need to be that long for the tra all the traffic that's turning left onto Mill Street. That's it really That's only the needs point to you're making it could make it shorter and what would that do? <laughs> well it would be less long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's it do? Does it allow you to make anything with your site? Right. So so that that's that's where the where Derek was going with this comment. Um, okay. he he was suggesting because he has some concerns that um, we, you know our driveways are access restricted. They're right turns in and they're right turns out. So um, any traffic turning left into the site or left out of the site, uh, the intent is they would go through the cross access easement to 1160 and then out the traffic signal at Mill Street. Um, but his concern was if somebody was approaching to the, the, the site um, and they pass Mill Street, they don't know where they're going, then they're going to come to the site and they may want to make a left and either make an illegal left or have to turn around further that down was the, the point road. the town staff was making to you. Right. So what we did is we, we looked at that left turn lane, um, and although it is, is very long, and it's longer than it needs to be to accommodate uh, left turns at Mill Street, there are two commercial driveways across the street from the site that it also serves uh, to accommodate. Uh, and that is one of the reasons it was, it was made as long as it, as it was, uh, was to allow for left turns into that property across the street. So one of the concerns that we have with uh, switching it to a southbound left into one of our driveways is then it takes away the northbound left into uh, the, the driveway across, at least one of the driveways across uh, the street. Um, there's another uh, thing that um, we considered, and that is uh, what's called a two-way left turn lane. I'm sure you've seen them. Um, where you can go left, or suicide lane, as some, as some people call it, uh, where, yeah, where you can go left or uh, you can turn left in either direction from the center lane. 
Um, however, that center lane on the, on the Silas Dean right now is only about 11 feet. And typically when we, we uh, install a two-way left turn lane, we like to see the width closer to 15 feet. So it's really not wide enough to do that. And I think that's why you've seen, if you go up and down the Silas Dean, you see alternating left turn lanes as opposed to these two-way left turn lanes. Uh, that's that's part, of the, uh, part of the reason. Um, so what I did do th uh, this morning, uh, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we uh, will be submitting to the State Traffic Administration for an administrative decision review on this application. Uh, that, uh, that, on this project, I should say, that application is going in tomorrow. Um, I did talk with Greg Palmer, uh, who, who is uh, in the Division of Traffic Engineering at, at, at DOT. Uh, he will be leading this review for the Traffic Engineering uh, Department, uh, leading this OSTA review. Um, and we'll be looking at the access considerations for this project. And uh, his uh, opinion on this was that um, he prefers to see the, uh, access, the driveways restricted to right in, right out, as we have shown them. Um, their position is they feel it is safer for the left turns to enter and exit the site, uh, especially given we have the cross-access cross easement and ability to use the signal at Mill Street. They'd much rather see the left turns go in and out uh, at, at the signal because it's a, it's a safer um, operation. He also indicated um, that they typically, um, he doesn't, their department doesn't like to design for first time users. So, you know, although maybe the first time you go to the site, you know, you don't know where you're going, these are, this is a residential development. These people are going to live there. They're going to know how to get in and out. There's a hair salon there. People are going to be regulars. So, you know, they're, they're quickly going to know how to get into and out of the site. And if they did pass the site, there's two signals to the south uh, with large parking lots. One of them actually has a cul-de-sac, uh, an executive drive there where they could turn around. That's kind of their policy, the first time they won't even though it's a large <laughs> usage with, com with complications? They're saying well, they're, they're designing for regulars of the area yeah. so that you know yeah. what you're doing. Right, you're, you're not... It's a big impact it's, it, on the regular situation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, you, you try not to design the roads for uh, Christmas traffic, you know, for a couple of weeks a year. You know, it's uh, that, that sort of thing. Um, so that, that, was, uh, that was his position on that. Um, he did say that, you know, obviously these are just his preliminary thoughts, and when the uh, submission comes in uh, as part of the OSTA review process, they'll be, they'll be taking a, a thorough look at it. But um, obviously it's, a, it's Route 99, it's a state road, so it is, um, you know, they're going uh, to have the ultimate say, I guess, in what happens here, but they will certainly... Uh, take into consideration the uh, the town uh, legal traffic authority's opinion on this on this matter. So, um, if there is a, you know if it's if they feel strongly that we need to to look at doing something here, um, you know they'll take it into consideration. But right now their position is um, that they would like to see the uh, the driveways restricted to right in right out. So if you have any qu other questions on that comment, I can address them. Or other than that, I'm going to. There's, there's, there's a few other uh, outstanding comments that uh, I think Meg will go through uh, that Derek had made as well. So if you uh, flip to page 18, uh, those are the remaining comments that Derek had in his uh, memo from June 2nd. And all those have been addressed by Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, I did provide these answers to Derek today via email, um, and uh, so those have all been addressed. We've uh, labeled the con temporary construction fence. We've uh, revised the silt fence. Uh, we've included the phasing plans on sheet four. We added the note he requested on sheet six regarding the concrete monument. We labeled the hydrodynamic separators, and we added the town approval block on sheet three. So those were all the outstanding comments that we had from the town. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that may have come up from this most recent submission or from the meeting on the 16th. Uh, I do have a few comments on the proposed uh, conditions of approval that uh, Peter generated earlier today. So I'm happy to address those now or we can answer questions and I can address that later. 
good, Rich. Just one quick question. The solar panels on the roof and the ones in the garage, where's the energy going from those? Marty? Marty Kennedy, Lexington Partners. Um, we haven't decided whether they go to the grid or they go to the property itself. That's something that still needs to be worked out with the solar company. We kind of focused on just getting the specifications together for purposes of this meeting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, that, that was what I was asking because if it's going to go to the grid, then I think there's going to be significant additional infrastructure that isn't shown. If that's the case, we won't do it. Okay. Will it, excuse me, will those solar panels be visible from the street or will they be at? Yeah, they won't be visible. They're only okay. about six inches above the roof, and we have a parapet that's about three feet, so okay. you're not going to so see the those. Drainage and everything. Correct. Correct. <coughs> is, is Mill Street getting repaved? Mill Street is getting repaved by the town. Okay. So we're going to be coordinating with everybody because I know MDC is doing work in that area. So that'll probably occur first. We'll probably then do the road widening, and then I believe the town's going to come in and pave. Yeah, um, item 11, page 2 of your, of the long list. Okay. <laughs> um, placing no trees with, on the Mill Street snow shelf didn't seem to be resolved. How, it just the trees aren't going to be planted, the town thinks they ought to be, you don't have the room to do it, uh, you know, it's an impasse sort of. Yeah, so we responded to uh, this comment, and our position basically is that after we do the road widening, there's only going to be six feet of grass between the curb and the edge of the sidewalk. So we don't feel that it's appropriate to plant trees in that six-foot strip. Uh, I, I would kind of agree with you, but I don't like trees in that area sometimes. And, and on the keeps taking them down all over town. Right. So because they get too big and they uproot sidewalks and all that. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, somebody, did, this town staff didn't recommend it. It can't be done, basically. That was the conclusion. Right. Our, Do our you feel that way, Peter? <coughs> George, I was temporarily distracted. If you would repeat your question. I'm sorry, sir. It's okay. Uh, you no, know, I, I just wanted you guys kind of agree, sort of. Really, it's something really can't be done. What was that? Trees yeah. on Mill Street. Planting trees on Mill Street. On the north. On the north. Uh, I don't know that it can't be done. That was the applicant's response to my comment. Yeah, how do you feel about it? Since I don't necessarily. I mean, my theory was that they're, they're, we're granting some landscaping waivers uh, anyway, um, so maybe as to compensate for that, um, we try. I didn't get a chance to uh, have the um, town tree warden go out there and give See me an opinion as to whether he felt that it was a suitable location or not. But, it um, may not be. I mean, yeah, it's pretty I mean, narrow in there, I would think, especially after you, when you widen it. Yeah. Kind of thing, so. The result is a three-foot snow shelf, right? Three foot snow six, shelf? Six, six foot. foot. Oh, it's a six foot? Six yeah. foot snow shelf, then the sidewalk, right. and then there's one foot uh, north of the sidewalk before the private property begins for the Marshall's property owner. Yeah, this is on the north side. Yeah, it's pretty barren. There's no trees at all there, so that's that was why I threw that comment in originally. But um, so if you're interested in um, including that, uh, it would probably, we would want to do that with a caveat that the town tree warden uh, be heavily involved in that uh, opinion just to make sure um, you know it's a suitable location and whatever species is selected is you know likely to survive there. Is this on the north side or the south side? On the north side. Side. There's on the south side there are poles and other conflicts so um, we weren't thinking that side but the other side since there's nothing there uh, the part the Marshall's parking lot has a bunch of uh, pretty significantly sized trees now on the Silestine Highway side, but nothing on that side. Are there any like lane use signs already in that area? There's a fire hydrant, I think, uh, over there, uh, and there are probably some lane use signs, but you could, I'm sure, work around them if, uh, if, you, if need be. That's why you have the tree wide and look at it too, right? People that that was my, I just didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to uh, coordinate with him. He was uh, pretty much all out the last couple of weeks. 
question on 13. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go through the whole list. It's just a few of these. Sure. Okay. Um, there was supposed to, MDC was supposed to come up with a, uh, something about the, there was a, the guy in water sewer capacity in the area. I would think the sewer capacity ought to be outstanding after putting a new vacuum uh, <coughs> system down to the Rocky Hill facility. But uh, hey, what? Why are they taking their usual long time at doing? Things? They are. T they are taking a long time. We've been uh, having multiple yeah, conversations with them, and I believe that Peter has addressed this in one of the conditions that before the final mylars are recorded, we need to provide that adequacy letter. All the informal discussions we've had with them have shown that it's not going to be an issue, and we will have capacity, um, but I don't have a fiscal letter to give to the commission. So that's why Peter addressed it uh, as one of the conditions of approval. As I said, logically, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So let me, let me turn it back to you here uh, after I remind everybody that you did allude to the fact that Peter has put together a a suggested list of issues for us to weigh <clears throat> in terms of the motion. Um, we did ask him to do that last week, so take a peek while she mm -hmm. goes over some of it, because obviously you've got some concerns about some of it. Uh, not too many concerns. I just wanted to um, add a couple things. Um, do you want me to go through those now? Sure. Sure. Yep. For item one, I just wanted to add, uh, He, uh, after it says, Section 5.10, I also wanted to add uh, Section 5.5. And let's see here. Uh, comment 4 was the one about MDC, so that's one that I feel addresses uh, Commissioner Oikel's concern. It basically says that prior to submitting the final mylars, we need to submit correspondence from MDC regarding approval of the site plan for water and sewer and that there's sufficient capacity for the development. So we're where you agree with that condition of approval. So, so sure. clarify for me, what's yeah. five? <clears throat> Why do we want five five? Sure. Oh, consolidating parcels? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say five two. Five, five two. two, which has to do with the, um, the way that the application is approved as a special permit. So I just thought it was 510 is the mixed use regulation. So I thought it was more comprehensive to say five two and 510. So Peter, did we want to say 5-4? I thought that was actually part of. <clears throat> 510 is the mixed use, so I'm, in terms of what reference. Um, okay. Simply because it there. comes under 5-4. 5-4 are the dimensional requirements. Um, Well, while he's thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to see if we could possibly add some language to condition six. It says Mill Street shall be repaved to the satisfaction of the town engineer. Uh, as we've discussed previously, the town's going to be doing that paving. We're doing the widening. So I just wanted to make it clear that this condition doesn't mean that we need to repave Mill Street. So I wasn't sure if we could. I did talk with Peter about that. He agreed that the town was repaving it, but I just wanted to make it clear. Any idea right. what the timing would be on something like that? He's obviously going to wait till you know the bigger Gulf Brook uh, sewer job is done. So I think the timing of that is coincidental with. Or maybe even after. I mean, just my so, only concern is that the like we're shifting the crown four or five feet and eradicating pavement markings. And when it's raining, pavement markings that are eradicated look like pavement markings. So I'm just it would be nice if it wasn't like a year later or something. Yeah, I, I can't. That, I can't. That's the danger that you run into is that you're shifting the crown potentially half a lane to the south. Um, and then you have pavement markings that are existing that what? sometimes when they're eradicated they actually look like pavement markings in a wet condition. You might want to discuss mm -hmm. that, Peter, a little bit too because sometimes the town likes to wait a year after mm -hmm. serious drainage mm -hmm. ditches are filled in. 
before they repave, even sometimes two years. So I mean, yeah. I'd get a little concerned. Right. Mark just indicated also that we're not changing the crown of the road for that widening. So I just want to. Well, the crown right now matches the existing yellow line. And if we're moving the yellow line over, that's what the plans look like it's doing. We're, we're, not, we're not moving the yellow line over, right? We're, we're, no, we're yeah, well, we're extending the yellow line. Yes. Right, it looks like the, so when, you, when you look at the existing contours, they look like they're. The crown of the road will end up being in the left turn lane. I guess is with what you're Correct. saying, right? <laughs> on like on the tire, like where the tire would be, mm -hmm. the left tire would be as you're turning right under turn left in the right. middle street. Eventually, usually your crown isn't like on a street like this. It's rounded off, and it's not necessarily the not most necessarily dangerous condition. Not. Right. In this case, I oh, want no, to no, just no, move no, the town. So we could do it. It's a bigger question. Um, is that? Starting the same location, chaotic. Yeah. 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 yeah, so this, I mean, we're we're looking at the sheet four of eighteen, showing the crown that's basically following the yellow line. That could just be a result of the survey because people survey the yellow line instead of a couple shots on either side of the yellow line so it could be misleading it's just that then on the next page we're showing the yellow line being what looks like almost half a lane maybe four feet or whatever to the to the south of the existing yellow line so we're it, it appears as though we're shifting the crown so that we're going to be moving the paint but then the crown is going to follow at some I, point. I would suggest moving the crown. You see that it starts in, this, in the center and it ends in the center of the yellow line. The yellow line. Uh -huh. It's only in the middle that it's moving over a couple of feet. Right. But I would suggest moving the crown the same way. Just leave it where it is. To follow the proposed yellow line, you would not move the crown to that? No. There's no reason for it. You'd be changing, then you'd be changing the uh, drainage areas from the different basins. Right, but what you're doing is you're taking the grade break and you're putting it outside of the wheel path. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not that big a deal, I suppose, when you're dealing with... It's not really noticeable. I understand. If the town wants to change the crown when they're in pain, they can do that. Right. I wouldn't suggest it, you know, whatever. It's, a, it's probably a bigger deal in like a yeah. high-speed situation, but just... Want the town to do something with the evaluator? No. Maybe we could, when the, when we get around to talking through some of these things, maybe we'll revise it to simply say, you know, to be coordinated with town staff when the time comes, right? Sure. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. For item eight, that was uh, the comment that I believe Peter crafted to address uh, Derek's comment that Mark uh, spoke of during the presentation. We do not think that that condition of approval is required based on the conversations that Mark has had with, with OSA today. So I would uh, propose that that be eliminated um, and not a condition of approval as part of uh, the motion tonight. Well, it is just suggesting that they investigate it, and you're doing that, right? right. So when the, you know, you'll document that fact. You discussed it, and as long as DOT agrees with you, and I tend to think they probably will. Okay. Right. Check that box. Okay. And finally, for item nine, the only uh, waiver that wasn't listed here that it is in the materials that we uh, presented was 6.2.C. <coughs> so just want to make sure that that waiver is added to the list. Uh, everything else that 6 we. 6.2.C. Correct. What is it? Sure. 6.2.C. Number. <coughs> number of requirements for parking waiver. It's it's referenced in uh, condition number two, but if you want to have it here too. Oh yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. And those were the comments that I had on the conditions of approval. Um, the large trucks, 
WB50s, mm -hmm. SU30s. Uh, this commission has always been concerned with that parking lot and uh, going way back. Uh, now, there seems to be some issue here, including with the fire marshal. You seem to have resolved it. Mm -hmm. Is everybody satisfied at this point that it, with the design does accommodate them? I think that's what I sensed out of it, but I wasn't sure. Yep. I had a question that same. Go ahead. I know no, you no, did. No. Yeah. I said question because you know I, I assume that also applies to the vertical clearance. Correct. Yeah. So you, what, what is the vertical clearance there? Fourteen feet. You can get a ladder truck back there. Yeah, we checked with the fire, the fire marshal, to make sure that we had enough clearance. So, yeah, I would presume, especially because Derek wrote the second memo on June 2nd after we had given him the truck turning maps that he's satisfied with that because we didn't get another comment back about that. Okay. Same thing from uh, the fire. We didn't get any comments back after we provided the templates. And you have the capacity for a four-story building? Yep, I mean, we've got much larger, okay. and they've added a fire hydrant and a connection to the building, so uh, the, the seems to address his concerns, although we did not get we did not get a memo from him, so another one. Uh, this issue of wanting anyone, but particularly truck drivers coming south on the Silestein mm -hmm. and wanting to turn in and your item thirty five on the list um, page seven. Uh, I'm not sure what the answer is. That's what I wrote in my notes when I went through this. Sure. So uh, I mean, is there any answer to it? Probably there isn't because I noticed later on there's no place to put the signs north of Mill Street on the side of the coming south. Is that correct? Is that what I understand? Yeah, we had uh, we submitted. If you notice I, on the the front of the packet, I submitted. I, we submitted it initially on May 25th, and then we revised it on June 2nd. But when we submitted on May 25th, we gave that to town staff. And then after we submitted, we met with them to go through. And that was one of the comments uh, that was resolved. We, they spoke through with Derek and our team if we could place a sign anywhere that would be helpful to somebody driving southbound to get them to turn onto Mill Street. And it was determined that there really wasn't any location uh, where we, we, you could post it because you have uh, five lanes, five yeah, lanes there. Quite a bit there. And yeah. so you really need to alert somebody ahead of time to get into the left turn lane. And so there wasn't a place to put it either on the right side or the left side of the road. A lot of congestion going right. in and out of Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Right. So that adds to the issue. Yeah. The DOT wouldn't allow the sign, the private development sign, to go within the state right away. So, I'm so sure they wouldn't. <laughs> okay. So, so we worked. Not an yeah. to it. It's just yeah. a, it was a, an attempt to do something. Yeah. yeah, it was an attempt to do something, and I think after we sort of resolved this issue, this issue was when Derek came up with that, uh, the first comment from his June second memo about looking to do some sort of left turn lane uh, further down past Mill Street. Mm -hmm. So. A the close gents in the middle will probably allow, John yeah. will probably allow a sign to be put on his front lawn, I'm sure. That, that's probably not close enough to the street, though. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also a little too close probably to, uh, to that Mill Street intersection because you'd have to see the sign and then cross two lanes to make the left. Okay. Well, they'll all be turning around in his parking lot. Right. <laughs> um, two topics. The generator. Uh, what is that servicing? And is it quiet enough? And do any concerns about noise? Is it just you know exercising it once a month? So the uh, generator services the uh, common area systems of the building: uh, the elevator, the hallway lights. It's a central corridor. Um, it also services the outside lights in the event that power goes down, that the lighting is still going on outside. It does not heat or cool the building during, during that crisis. The testing period, it's, it's, it's done on a quarterly basis to my knowledge. All right, thank you. So when I was looking at the site plan, the dumpster location, I don't know why it just looks really small. Maybe it's because the plans in general are pretty small <laughs> in, in size. So I look at it and go, there's a lot of apartments. Is it big enough? Mm -hmm. I assume staff looked at that topic. 
Uh, there are two, um, if I recall correctly, two designated areas, one for each uh, property. Um, obviously, if the refuse that's generated, you know, exceeds the capacity, the pickup schedule is just going to have to be, you know, more frequent than, than it is. It's a tight area back there with the interconnection between the two parking areas. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, that's also something that can be tweaked. Uh, if need be as they as they go forward so um, yeah, yeah we're, sh we're showing three proposed dump dumpsters on 1178 two on 1160 so five in total for both properties and we think that it's going to be adequate based on the other projects that Marty has done right. thank you I saw a hand up over here yes yes Tom? Um, a confirmation from uh, Peter uh, on a remark you made uh, a time ago. Uh, if I heard you correctly, you indicated that there, in addition to the new fire hydrant, there's a Siamese connection uh, at the building itself. Yes. Yes. I don't recall seeing that on the plans, but uh, um, it's so I wanted to make sure that, that you know, I heard you correctly <coughs> in your statement. It's a freestanding free uh, fire department yeah. connection, and I think that has been added to the plans. Okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. Done. One other, one other mm -hmm. quick question. Going back to the solar panel installation, mm -hmm. and the solar panels that are being installed in the you know the parking lot sheds let's say mm -hmm. um what what's the wind load bearing of of the roofs of those sheds okay let's see what are they just you know in terms of uh, uh wind load coefficient or you know, velocity of yeah of i winds? know i s i know i saw the wind load um, spec we, we usually engineer for the to, roof to a certain standard. And Let's see here. You know, I don't know if the spec sheet I gave you for the solar carport shows that. I know that for the roof <coughs> panels, it did indicate that. Um, I saw that. Let me see here. Yeah, let's see. 2400 PA wind load was for the roof panels. So that's for the solar array on the roof. So I'm not sure about the carports. I don't have that in the spec sheet that I gave you for the for the carport panels. Okay. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not so much concerned about the panels themselves but they'll the actual you know, structure. they add to the weight of you know those those the the roofing mm -hmm. of those uh, uh, of those sheds and in the event of a hurricane or very strong winds um, if they get blown around they could create some hazards so my construction partner has been working with the solar uh, company I don't have the specifications and he's not with us here but I can tell you that these units are used throughout Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, with, with similar weather patterns and everything else. And these are, you know, structural soundness is something that we really wanted to make sure was there. So I think we've covered that issue in terms of wind and, and dealing with the, uh, the trials and tribs of New England weather with what we expect. Okay, I guess we'll place detrimental <coughs> reliance on your statement. So not immediately. Nope. Go ahead, Yolanda. I just have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So just a quick, quick question about um, illumination. Mm -hmm. Definitely looks like you haven't. Well, first, let me just say this. This was really very comprehensive set of plans, a lot of good information, a lot of details. I know that the town staff in your office and, and the developer um, did a lot of you know, effort, and, and I could see that. So I appreciate that. So that's number one. Um, illumination. Mm -hmm. 
um, looks like there's plenty of, of lighting that will mm -hmm. be on, on, the, on, the, on both, both parking lots. But one of the places where they didn't, didn't seem to have a lot of lighting was by the dog park. And I wondered if it was a specific reason why just the path was lit, but not the, the park itself. Was there any reasoning behind that? Sure. I, just the reasoning was that we didn't want uh, we didn't want people down at the dog park after dark, basically. Uh, we thought it could be a possible disturbance to the residents. Mm -hmm. uh, it's similar to what Marty has done at some of his other projects that have mm -hmm. dog parks. Uh, so we, we did light the bollards um, for that path, but not the dog park itself. Okay. That makes sense to me. Um, and another thing I was wondering about was, was the drainage and the, the, the drainage layout. And I, was, I found it interesting that the way the drainage is set up, Corey, is that the way the site drains as you're, as you're driving into the facility, that all the, the way it's graded, they'll be, the water will be collected as you're driving in the, in the entrance way as opposed to draining away from the, from the driveway. Was there a specific reason why you chose to, to design the drainage so that it's being collected like almost in the center of the travel way, of the driveway? Which, <coughs> which drop are you referring to? The northern driveway, the northern entrance. But as you know, the site slopes from north to south. Yep. We have to be careful about filling within the, within the flood plain. We sort of have to follow the grading as to where the basins are located. If you start putting them in, in the middle, is, is what you're saying? Yeah, you put them in the middle. You'd have to go back up and back down. You're going to end up with a situation where we're going to need more fill than we can possibly tolerate on the site. So it really follows the grading that the site wants to be at. Okay. So I do see that you've, you're feeling a lot more as you get closer to Silas mm -hmm. Dean. And then yeah, it, it, the you're almost. At least somebody mentioned before that it drops down when you first come in there, so it's sort of have to. Yeah. And it's kind of how the building, too, because the building yep. doesn't step down as it goes from yep. north to south. So. Right. But if you look at, you know, it's unfortunate because you don't have the screen, mm -hmm. but if you, if you look at sheet 8 of 18, like the way the, the drainage is, and I'm sure it's going to function fine, but it just seems like it's draining towards the center of the, <coughs> where you, and you can just come on over here, Corey, and I could show you because I have it highlighted. And what I was thinking is when you're driving in and it's raining fairly heavy, you might end up with like water in the middle of the travel way mm -hmm. rather than being dispersed mm -hmm. off to the side by the curves. That's all. <coughs> North. Yep. So. That's just what I noticed. Mm -hmm. I have it actually highlighted, and maybe there's a good reason for it. Maybe you looked at other options. But I just noticed that the catch basins are all here. So basically, you're draining this way, right? Away from the building. Away from the building, which is good. But I mean, yeah. you have this. Yeah, and away from these guys. You don't want to. Okay. You don't want them to. So that's why you located here. You don't want here. to be okay. sitting, you know. Yeah. yeah. Near ponding and things. So, all right. Yeah. The other thing too is there's there might be some. I, I just want this to grade nice. You know how I am with drainage. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know there might be because you're sloping towards the wetlands mm -hmm. on the east side. Mm -hmm. There actually may be some low spot areas here, unless you don't have any spot elevations. No, so you see where the contours are. Yeah, here. See, they're all going down. So this is going to go this way. Did you see where the panthers are? I didn't know if that would be a low point. No, no, no. But no, you no. checked for that? It's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. because it's going to go this way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and a tough question I have is about the backwater because you have the brook right there on the south side. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, their site is higher. You know, uh, the top of frames and the, the catch basins are higher mm -hmm. than, than, uh, than the brook. But was there any calculations done, like for backwater calculations, mm -hmm. that would tell you, like, okay, good, the pavement will be, the lot will be dry? Except in a 100-year storm. Well, no, it's that's fine, problem. right. No, that I understand. But, I mean, you know, yeah, for like a 10-year storm, you, you did take a look at that yeah. to make sure you didn't have that adverse effect. Yeah, Derek is pretty good about reviewing all that stuff. 
Mm -hmm. I saw a very detailed yeah. review. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I just have one more, one more question about landscaping. Um, I noticed on the landscaping plan again, very nicely done and well detailed. But I noticed you had a different type of grass on the on the west side as opposed to the east side of the bank, because I was looking where the outlets were. And I was a little concerned with erosion, but it seemed that there was different type of grass or different seeds. types of grasses for different Proposed. elevations, different hydrologies. Different. So can you just talk a little bit more about that? Well, I think the one on the the south side, yep. the lower elevation, yes. it's going to have some different species to tolerate some periodic inundation, whereas around the dog park and coming around the back side, mm -hmm. it's a little higher in elevation. Mm -hmm. I'm anticipating it's going to be a little drier, mm -hmm. so some different species. And then, of course, the mowed area is the fescue mixture is a grass lawn. One type so that of was species. The why, not, not to say that right. it was an error. I was just curious as why you would. No, different do different that. species for different yeah, hydrology. Okay. Okay. Very good. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Not, that's. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have oh. a question. Just regarding the 1160 access easement. Mm -hmm. um, let me back up a little bit. I think you're asking for a. Waiver for lighting for light spillage on 1160 Correct. from the town. Is that in the easement? Um, I believe it uh -huh. is. Access. So when looking for that, I have a question on parking related to 1160. Mm -hmm. I think there's 4,000, 5,000 square feet of empty space in that building. Um, is there a, a restriction? that when that space gets filled in, that they have a limited number of parking based on your calculation of the assumed use of the current space? Yeah. Well, the, the parking study assumed that vacancy rate when we did it, um, which I think we discussed last, uh, last time, but I think the act, because of the, the easement agreement, the, uh, the parking agreement mm -hmm. says they have to go back and the zoning yeah. Could you, sorry. Yeah, just come up. could you come up to the mic and just, sure. yeah. Yeah, the, the first thing I said was um, when we did the parking study, we did assume that uh, that vacancy rate in the calculation so that it was a, everything was parked based on that being fully occupied. Um, I think your question is related to, uh, your that may not be here. Four or five thousand square feet of that right. empty space will be utilized at the same rate Correct. of the current building. Right. Current use. So your question is: uh, that's in, Does the owner of eleven sixty know that? Is mm -hmm. that is that a business? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As part of, and just maybe to jump back to your first question, so two things. When we submitted the application, both 1178, the owners for 1178 and 1160, both signed the application and the requested waivers. So the owner does, of 1160 does recognize that there will be light spillage onto his property. Um, so, and we also feel that it is covered in the easement. If you'd like us to add something even more specific than that, uh, that's something we could do, but he definitely is aware of it because he signed the waiver application, which indicated that there was light spillage between the properties. So that's in there. I just yeah. I trust you. I just, I just want to see it in there. And it, again, if that's if there's a change of use, but the current use is office space. I'm, I'm curious, how many spaces does he have available when he comes to the town and he has a new potential resident mm -hmm. of I can see for that space? I, I would have to do a calculation. Okay. Exactly how many were available, I don't know. Come on. <laughs> Can't but just I, do well, it. I know, you know, that, I think, you know, it, it, you know, he may even exceed that based on the current employees. I think when that new, uh, you know, tenant comes in that building, I'm curious how the town's going to look at that in terms of number of employees and if they have that number available to be able to accurately evaluate that new tenant. I also think, um, Peter, if you look at uh, the proposed condition three that Peter suggested, he is sort of... Uh, I think preparing for that situation, he indicates that if there is a change in tenancy of either of the buildings, that the ZEO has to make sure that the parking still works, and if not, it gets referred back to this commission for further review. So I do think that if 
there is an issue with some sort of change in tenant that everybody's on the same page that we need to make sure that that parking analysis still That's works. Concerns, 1160, when they come in, again, yeah. I just want to make sure they're clear on right. how many spaces they have available because it's very tight for parking. Right. And then in terms of parking as well, how are you guys going to handle snow storage? Snow storage? So we, the plan is to basically stockpile where we can in the landscape islands, which is limited, as you know, uh, from the site plan, and then truck it off. So that Marty understands that that's what's going to need to happen for this property. All right. This time I'm not going to ask if there are other questions. I'm going to move on. This is a this is a public hearing, so I want to get the I want to get the public's. <coughs> ask me, Mr. Chairman. No, no. no. But before we <coughs> but before we do, I want the public to hear, and I also want the commission to start thinking about that. Besides the articles that are listed, five four, five ten. Six twos and, and and other places where they're looking for uh, for waivers <coughs> that this is a special permit and needs to comply with Article Eight, which is special permit criteria. And so I'm going to real quickly just go over the topics. Uh, eight point one is suitable location. Eight two is neighborhood compatibility. Eight three is appropriate structures and landscaping. Eight four is suitable access and parking. And obviously, we're hitting a lot of these topics, but I want to make sure that you're all comfortable with it by the time we're done. Eight five is overall circulation. Eight six, adequate public utilities. Eight seven, environmental protection and conservation. Eight eight, consistent with purposes. Um, and what that is is uh, proposed use of the acti activity will not be detrimental uh, in its effect on public health, safety, welfare, that kind of thing. And then there are other considerations such as lighting signs and, and, and landscaping and screening and, and, and so forth. So just just know that <clears throat> when we all have a dialogue about what we're doing with this, it needs to be consistent with Article 8 as well. All right. Is there anybody from the public who wishes to offer some comments on this proposal? Wow, really? OK. Then we'll take it back. <clears throat> Commission members want to go back to asking questions? Move to close hearing. Second. All right. We have a motion to, to close and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. <coughs> Thank you. Have a seat. <laughs> um, so as we said before, Peter has a proposed um, list of conditions or proposed language for a motion. Uh, I've been making some notes of my own on how we might add to it, edit it. I don't know if others have as well. Do we want to start with a dialogue or would somebody like to actually make a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion just so that we have something to work from. Uh, make a motion that we approve application 1945-17-Z um, with the... 11 numbered stipulations in Peter's memo to the commission dated June 6th with following changes. Um, line three of item one, add after section 510 and section 5.2. Um, in item three, I would change in the second line where it says change in tenancy i would say change in commercial tenancy just so that in case somebody moves out of an apartment <laughs> it doesn't look like they have to come back for um, zoning approval for item six that um, it be modified to say something like um, Mill Street shall be repaved to the satisfaction of the town engineer following any work performed by the applicant in conjunction with this project, just so that they don't have to fix it if it's something they haven't done. Um, item nine be Can amended. Huh? I'm trying to write some notes in. Okay, go ahead. Item nine uh, add. In the waiver 6.2.C, um, parking um, reduction. Parking reduction as provided in more detail in stipulations two and three above. 
and we'll stop with that for now. All right, so <clears throat> we have a motion. Do we have a second for conversation purposes? I'll second. Thanks, Tony. All right. So can I just clarify what your intent was with six? So, so what they what they don't you know harm they don't have to repair but in the end I think the way I heard you say it that the applicant will repave the road if nobody else does Isn't that well then and, and is that is that what we want or are we or are we as a town <clears throat> going to say we will one way or the other repairing it when they're done well I guess it, it's it's uh, you know it's unclear to me and I, I think it's up in the air as far as who's going to be doing what first mm -hmm. I mean if they if they widen first you know and they repave that nicely you know and the MDC comes along and, and digs the whole thing up I don't think the applicant should have to go back and redo the whole thing over again after the MDC comes through if you know, it's basically on the town's to-do list in the first place. But if, you know, the MDC comes through, the town paves it, these people are five years behind, and then they widen it, you know, if it requires repaving at that time because, you know, they're the last one to do the work, last one. Right. then it has to be to the satisfaction of the town engineer. Um, you know, with the presumption that they won't be redoing everything that everybody else has done just the parts that they needed to do so i don't know how to make that clearer I've, well I've there, would the records i agree with that right so to, is the record enough to offer that clarification well, i have some alternate language that i think might provide the clarification okay if that may be. I, I would offer offer this language uh, uh that uh instead of what is written on on number six um uh, that that language be replaced by the following all work carried out by the applicant on or in widening Mill Street will be executed to the satisfaction of the town and engineer consistent with applicable standards and regulations well, and that that definitely puts any work that the applicant does on or about Mill Street that it has to be performed in accordance with the town engineering uh, standards and, and the town engineer oversight. I don't understand. I mean, is the Mill Street, we're, are we planning on lumping that with the larger Golf Brook sort of milling and operation? A after, yeah. Like, that's, is that already planned? That was... Um, testified by the town engineer the last so right time now, and in the his memo issue is making sure that that happens after this widening is done right is that relatively S certain well uh, the timing uh, uh, it, it it's certain the work's going to be done <laughs> so the applicants agreed to the widening the towns agreed to the paving and the MDC is obviously doing their golf street golf uh, brook uh, interceptor work the bigger concern that I have is the timing of all of this as it relates to this development wanting to get a certificate of occupancy. I don't want them hung up because everyone else is delayed. Um, yeah, let's say the MDC is delayed. For so that also should be part of our conversation that, I mean, we know it's gonna be done. Uh, timing is flexible as in any construction project sometimes, uh, but the town would come in at the end of all of that and, and pave uh, the road. So. Um, how that gets crafted into a memo, I'm uh, a condition I'm not quite sure, but uh, I think that's the overriding principle here that um, those things are, are done. And, <clears throat> and and to Rich's point, if the applicant is delayed by five years, you know maybe they would be last, and if they are last, they should be repairing it, right? So does that mean we've come full circle and we like your language? If the town engineer is happy, we're happy. And we right. leave it on town staff. I think, so. well, I think that that was probably what Tom, Tom was just to wrote, get right? At, yeah, you know, that it, right. it just be done, 
properly that when, according that, to the that town whatever engineer. Work the, that the, whatever work the applicant does, that it's going to be in accordance with the approval of the town engineer and in accordance with the applicable regulations and standards. And, and, and it doesn't, you know, the intent is not to uh, put time limits on or uh, decree certain things at certain times, but rather that whatever the applicant does in accordance with, you know, with any work on Mill Street performed by the applicant, that it is done pursuant to the town engineer. I think that's what the applicant has agreed to do, and that's what I think my understanding is from all the testimony that's been provided. That's what, what the town engineer and other officials have stated that, you know, they, they want to be, want this work performed in a coordinated fashion with the work that the town intends to do on Mill Street. And whatever the applicant does, that it be done in accordance with the, you know, the town engineer's stamp of approval and, and the applicable standards. Yeah. So m maybe I could suggest, rather than modifications to six, maybe a slight modification to five. So five, at the beginning of five, it says, uh, the Connecticut DOT will replace the traffic signal at Silestine Highway intersection along with the implementation of left turn phasing on Mill Street. Uh, then maybe you should, we should add the applicant uh, shall um, establish the westbound left turn lane on Mill Street approaching the Silestine Highway extended to accommodate 175 feet of storage capacity. Uh, and Mill Street is widened two to three feet along the north side per the site plan to the satisfaction of the town engineer. And then number six, uh, the, the only modification to that is Mill Street shall be repaved by the town, once again, to the satisfaction of the town engineer. Uh, unless they're last. Well, if, if that. And it is technically, I mean, in the sequence of activities, it is last. Um, and that's what I was attempting to. Well, I, th I break think out, with, but with your change to five, we don't need six. Uh, I mean, it can't. I don't know why it would be a stipulation of their approval that the town do something. That's true. They, I don't know, think we've got the authority to. That's true. Order could, the town to yep. do something. Yeah, I think you had testimony to that effect, and if you take it out, then it doesn't hang up the project. Uh, if in fact, you know, it was the last thing to be done and was still hanging out there, we just deal with it. Yeah, I mean, and, and yep. I, I think your revision to five yep. similarly is is not time related right. it's just you know they're going to widen the road and they're going to do it to you know satisfaction of the town engineer yep. whether it's first second third or fourth that's what it is okay okay right. so, so are they gonna, i'm sorry are they going to wait till nbc comes through to widen or are they going to do it well, part that's of their, i think they would widen it now as part of their and not worry about nbc front loader right? right? if, if nbc comes through and messes it up and they got to repair it but I think at least it's widened. You've got the Mill Street uh, capacity at the intersection there. Um, I just don't think you should link it with MDC. That's a perfect world. Though. Let's say they have a glitch or something on their side, or someone has a glitch somewhere along the way. And on whose side? MDC side? On the development side. On either side. Back, I understand what you're saying. Right. So let's say the MDC had to come through on their schedule. The roads are already paid and finished just because they had a delay for whatever reason. Yeah. And then and they would have it's to all build, would. they'd have to bring it up. So it all matches. Right. Say it was all milled and finished. Just I would say they would come so in and, and leave it in its existing condition. Or so it's all that. apples to apples. Or, you know, something to that effect where the, it matches the current condition the, of, of the road. The widening is probably more linked with the intersection light and timing right. improvements rather right. than the, the utility work. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, as the big person making the motion, I'm comfortable with Peter's revision because it's, you know, it's a standalone condition and it, and it only discusses the things that are the developer's obligation. And, and take out six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom, are you okay with that? I'm, seeing, I'm sorry, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. <coughs> okay. The only other thing, and I forgot to mention this, and it, the, uh, right now, 1178 South Sea Highway is two different lots. Those, that line has to go away. Um, so uh, a condition, what, is it 12 or 11? Be a uh, new number six. Oh, yeah, okay, throw it in the six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that the, the 1178, the lots are uh, combined as a condition of approval. 
All right. There were some other thoughts that were kicked around uh, while we were discussing. Uh, a tree warden weighing in on the potential for trees on the north side of Mill Street. I, when, they, when I thought it was three feet, I was thinking no way. But when they're six feet wide, you can put something in there. It doesn't have to be a lot. All it has to do be a couple of them, right? <clears throat> yeah, not a big deal. So if the tree warden thinks they work, would you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Tony? Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to lose sleep over that one. Right, exactly. Um, and of course, subject to final comments on the plans by town staff, right? That's not really in there, but it's kind of goes without saying. Well, number 11. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss one? Number Anybody 11 is a site plan shall be revised. Sorry. So, yeah, okay. that's, so it's a catch all for, like, they testified uh, and responded to those. We just haven't had a chance to see those details yet. So it's, those were the, the only outstanding items. Okay. <clears throat> all right. One, because it's kind of one of the most leap of faith items on, the, on this whole thing, the, the shared parking, um, I don't know whether we want to talk about that any in any greater detail because you know it's in the discretion of the ZEO just to review it and it may be referred to us um, and I don't know whether we want to take any more Authority. control of that mm -hmm. um, you know in terms of you know when when it gets referred to us or are we just comfortable with that or um i mean i, I think the the applicant had a good point last time that it's probably more important to them than it is to us that it work um one other thought i had was that maybe we can have them do an analysis a year after operation just so that you know, they can kind of report back to us, you know, this is how it's been working in reality. Um, and if it's working really well and 1160 is completely full, maybe we can just kind of stop worrying about it going forward. But, you know, I know that this is one of the things that a lot of us have been, you know, just kind of worrying about or, or thinking about in terms of, um, you know, one of, the, one of the waivers that it, you know, I mean, trees in the parking lot, we can do that all day long, but I mean here, you know, you're kind of hoping that a brand new development and an existing office building are gonna be able to, you know, live happily ever after with less parking than our regulations require. And, you know, just things like the fact that almost every other office building on that side of the road you know, it's being turned into medical offices, and we know that they require, you know, significantly more parking than accountants do. And that, uh, you know, this might be something that we wanted. There's one thing that I thought of, thought, I think we've all thought about that fully. And my position is that, you know, 1160, they've entered into this voluntarily. Why should we be concerned about their problems? They are not going to do more than is here unless we come back and approve it. They've signed off on the agreement. It's a business decision. I'm happy with it. I'm concerned about maybe the future, but the future is really not our responsibility. It's the owner's problem. And I, it's a business decision on their part. And I'm willing to accept that. I, I'm with you to a point. I mean, at a certain point, if it is a problem, it's gonna become our problem because they're parking at Marshalls, they're parking on the railroad tracks, they're parking on Mill Street, you know. Well, parking is always gonna be a problem. Potentially, you know, we, we can sit here and say, what if, what if, but we're looking at it, what is here today? And, you know, I, I wouldn't wanna hold up, you know, development and the you know, success of this project because of, well, what if, what if, uh, given the facts that we have here, I, I think we've done as much as we can. I don't think Rich wants to hold anything up, but he wants to think about the future. I, but how, to, to think about the future, if we're going to approve it, it's approved. Well, what difference 
to, to come back and do it now. I know I'm not arguing with you. I mean, that's fine. Well, but, you are. But, yeah, it sounds like you're arguing with <laughs> 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 I think the other report coming back is good. It's an educational item coming back. Here. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 maybe everything is fine, and then uh, that's the last we ever talk about it. Yeah. Or, I mean, if the neighbors yeah. entered into it, and they want to do something with their tenants, then they do the analysis and determine if what they want to do to their building is going to impact the parking. The, the way I look at it is the current building that's there, the bank and the you know, office space and that sort of thing, they have a significant investment. They, I don't think they lightheartedly entered into this agreement. I think they fully know what they're getting into. I mean, obviously there's lawyers involved from their side and they, they know where they're going with their building and, and the potential ramifications. I mean, Mr. Silver hit it on the head. I mean, they entered into this deal and this is their neighbor. These people have been sistered together forever. And it seems to me that this is a very intimate relationship between these two properties in a unique way. So I, I think the landlord and the, the owner said the, the existing office building know fully what they're getting into, at least from writing and into the contract. I, I respect Rich's concerns and all that, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not overly worked up about it. So, Rich, were you c concerned about the ZEO having to you know, have some discretion and whether he sends things to you guys for review, or do you want to change the may no, to not, shall? No, not the current ZEO. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I actually was just putting that out there more for more for discussion than to generate arguments. Okay. Um, because I know that this is something that we spent a lot of time talking about, looking at, and, and you know, obsessing about, and. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I said what I kind of had as, you know, latent concerns. Um, and if, you know, the commission as a whole felt like doing anything about it, this is the time. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't think uh, if, you know, if the situation is not working out, the report's not going to help us fix it. Um, I guess when you were suggesting it, I was thinking it would be, perhaps valuable as a learning tool as, as we potentially see it, you know, five years from now or for another site or maybe next year with another site, you know, whatever. Uh, I didn't really see it as something we could remedy if it's not working out, but if we, you know, but maybe we know that intuitively after we see how it's operating or town staff will be able to tell us intuitively that it's not working without having to do a formal report. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's problems out there. We're probably going to hear about it. We're actually going to see about it. We drive by it every day. You know, if the report will give us some kind of teeth, but at this point, I think it's it's really the applicant's going to have to deal with it. We're, we've approved it now. Uh, we're assuming we're going to we're going to vote on it. Let's say um, you know, if it doesn't have any teeth, it's really just uh, really for information only. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, and who knows? The CEO may request the report like that when he decides whether he's going to allow you know, the third and fourth floors of 1160 to be changed over to medical. I mean, they'll have to prove that they have well, excess right. capacity. They would have to do that. It's, they would, they would have, have to. That's part of their obligation right. to right. come in and prove to us that it's, it's necessary. Right. And, that's, and the risk is on that building owner. That he, he, he ain't dead already. All right. Well, I just wanted to have the conversation because I'm I wasn't arguing. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you, you never <laughs> argue. No. So we are taking a of faith. I'm curious to see how this can operate and how your, your theory works out. Uh, obviously, we hope it works for the best uh, for all our town uh, citizen stakes. But um, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm comfortable with this uh, as it is. So. I'm satisfied. So I would also indicate satisfaction on my part and <laughs> state that uh, you know modern current principles of urban planning de-emphasize parking as a major issue, and it runs kind of. Uh, 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 argues kind of against the tyranny of the internal combustion engine and motor vehicles as a, as a, you know, as a basis for you know, urban power. planning decisions. Jim's, Jim's probably going to be in the salon often, so he can report back to us. <laughs> yeah. uh, he'll be up so, on the roof. That's right, the at, the, at the bar. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so, so going back, Unless there are some additional comments on the on the motion itself or any conditions, I just want to remind everybody the you know the section eight, um, section eight, the article eight, special permit criteria. It is supposed to be consistent with our goals and objectives as a community, uh, the plan of conservation and development, the Silas Dean master plan. Peter, could you without 
belaboring the issue, summarize those thoughts? Sure. I, I, in a in a pre-application review uh, memo that, if you recall, that we uh, prepared for this initially when they came in with the concept, we talked about that. So both the plan of conservation and development and the uh, master plan that was prepared for the Silas Dean Highway encouraged exactly this type of development uh, and suggested that the commission should treat those uh, similar type developments with a, a great deal of flexibility. Uh, uh, we encouraged uh, taller uh, buildings uh, closer to the street, parking behind, uh, shared parking arrangements. Uh, if you go down the list of the uh, criteria that was in the plan of development as well as the master plan, this particular development checks off all of those boxes in terms of the type of development, uh, or should I say redevelopment, that we want to see uh, in a number of select locations on the Silas Dean Highway. This particular site was specifically identified for that type of treatment, so I think um, in terms of uh, uh, achieving some of the goals and objectives that we have previously documented in your planning documents, this is uh, right on target with exactly uh, what we want to see happen with this property. That sounded like a closing statement. I have uh, two, uh, not so fast. two minor items. One's the housekeeping item, <laughs> and that has to do with um, uh, number uh, eight in the, I guess the proposed uh, uh, motion and in, and it's number eight in Peter's memorandum <coughs> of June 6. And my understanding is that the applicant has, it desires us to be, to uh, delete that particular provision due to the fact that uh, it's not consistent with the uh, DOT standards that are likely to be applied in, in their review. And it, uh, you know, left turns uh, onto or out of the Silas Dean is not to be encouraged. And I don't think that that, that deletion was contained in, in Rich's uh, motion. I, I didn't intend to delete it. I mean, I think we know what the answer is going to be, but they haven't filed an application. They've only had an informal conversation with someone. So, um, you know, I, I still think there would be some value in formally asking the question and having it formally answered so that we never have to discuss it again. If it saves us future work, you know, in the, <laughs> I'm, I'm all in favor of it. Well, because, I mean, just in, in the grand scheme of things, figuring out some way to, to get people turning left may be a good thing. But if the answer is no, because you're going to be blocking, you know, off the access to, to three pre-existing driveways on the other side of the road, and it's too short, and it's too dangerous, you know, then I, I think just to protect ourselves, it's probably good to have that answered yeah. officially. Uh, right, and and in rereading it, it just says the applicant shall investigate. It doesn't make yeah. it a requirement. Right. So. right. Talking about housekeeping, that <laughs> reminded me, one of the things that we had talked about last time, and it might have been you, was people hanging stuff off the balconies. Um, do we want to add that in or just kind of take them on faith that they're not going to create an eyesore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The ones directly over the patio. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure we want <laughs> our zoning officer to, you know, now delve into that realm of enforcement in terms of towels and that kind of thing. I think, uh, uh, as was indicated in the testimony, that the management uh, uh, of the development and, and the rules under which people lease um, their units uh, there was going to be language contained in those documents to, you know, tie the people to those kinds of restrictions. Um, I, you know, I'd rather live with that and then have the town approach the developer and all their management company and have them enforce it than have the zoning officer, you know, delve into those kinds of judgments in terms of what's okay on the patios and what's not. Um, I, I was satisfied with, with, with that response. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, and if they're going to have clotheslines between the units, it'll be on the back side where it won't be visible between the, the street. Between, between the two that sides of the That would be in L. it, though, yeah. for uh, ever, even if they sold it. Yes, so I mean, it's part of this permit as far as the testimony, so. It's a condition that's okay. there permanently. Right. You know, and I'm not worried, but. No, 
Who is it? But you never know. You know, so you're saying if we put a uh, yeah, maybe a we should put something in to, to that to, extent. But you could probably uh, to say protect ourselves for the future. I, I agree. Because That's the way I look at it. It runs with the land. But there were a lot of other things that were testified in the record that I are also part of the record, and I mean, if you think that rises to the top of all of the, your concerns, then I put it in there. I, d I just, you know, I'm not sure where we where we cut it off if if that's. No, I mean, you're you're the people doing the enforcing, and, and the only reason it jumped to mind was he talked about housekeeping, so it made me think of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right, you understand Peter's saying that basically it's part of the testimony, so it's part of the record as to how it was approved. But it's not and a condition. I mean, I don't know if because it's in the testimony, we could have put it in a, in a condition. I, I, uh, can a future owner say, well, it's not a condition and I'm not required to, you know, to follow that? I'm not giving a specific, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. it's just kind of a, well, if I'm not concerned with this particular developer, future's a long time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to probably break the development if you want to add something, if you know that helps to move along. But I would, um, yeah, I kind of said my piece. But if, if you feel you know that well, much of a concern, well, something vague. I mean, yep. we don't need yep. to be specific to be like you do with a, in restrictive covenants, you know, with the, the closed lines and all that kind of stuff. Yep. But you know, so, you know, something vague that uh, you know, you know, the balconies have to be you know maintained in a reasonable condition and not create a you know an eyesore. You know, to you know, to the community, something you know, general that at least we can interpret to, to for enforcement purposes later on. I'm not suggesting a detailed. Uh, I would probably then say, and that detail shall be submitted to the town for the town's review and input, because you know, if you're making it too weak, there's no point in having it, and so maybe something <coughs> to the effect that um, you know, as as testified by. Um, uh, Marty Kenny in the proceedings uh, the, the developer shall provide um, specific um, Le lease language well, covenants regarding the you know um, the use of the balcony use use and appearance Appear or uh, appear uh, of uh, the appearance of the balcony appearance of the balcony um, something like that Le yeah, that, that's fine with me. Lease, lease covenants, is that what you said? So in other uh, words, restrictive whatever, covenants. whatever they put in their leases? Yeah, and that, right? those, those conditions would be then transferred onto the tenancy for each of the units, so. Yeah, that, that's fine. All right. Tony, you seconded it. I will second that as well. All right. Put it over I was going to say, any more housekeeping issues? More <laughs> <laughs> and it's just basically to reaffirm something because I didn't quite hear it in, in the motion that was made and that is that there be ex, you know explicit granting of the special permit uh, pursuant to article 8 of the, uh, uh, of the so I was so I was struggling with that you think it's necessary uh, we had a dialogue about it it's not a condition it's not a condition on the applicant so I just I had it written down and then I said that's not for them. Well, we've been talking primarily about uh, conditions and waivers, and the motion I would think would, should also include uh, the granting of the primary purpose of the applicant's application, which was the, this a special use permit. I, th I think if someone just says for the record, um, and the rest of the, commission, the commission agrees, and the commission finds, finds that the exactly with these stipulations is consistent exactly. With Special Our, the special permit criteria of Article Eight of the zoning regulations, particularly consistency with the plan of conservation and development in the Silas Dean Master Plan, which encourages this type of development. Splendid. Indeed. Read. Almost word for word. <laughs> oh, you wrote it down. <laughs> All right. Any more housekeeping? All right. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Congratulations. Actually, Congratulations. I suppose there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to start tomorrow. So, by the way, um, so, so Dan, for the record, Dan, you were not. Dan, Dan, for the record, you were not participating in the vote. No, I'm not voting. I understand. I didn't.
didn't vote. Definitely not both. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Good luck. Move on to the next item, uh, 3.2, a public hearing for application 1946-17-Z. This is for <clears throat> Andre Markov, special permit. Is this is the right one? Yeah. yeah. Special permit in accordance with section 5.2H.5, permitted principal uses, trucking or freight operations with complete visual screening of equipment and materials they're wishing to park trucks on the premises at 61 Arrow Road. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. So if you could start by introducing yourselves and then give us an overview of what the proposal is. Uh, my name is Vitaly Melnik, Andrew Markiv, and Igor Stefak. Uh, we are basically applying for the permission to park in the 61 Arrow Road in Wethersfield just to park our trucks there because I guess it was stated that we do trucking and freight operation there. That's it is not true. We just park there. And the um, we are local businessmen in Wethersfield. We've been living here for f uh, quite a few years. I actually graduated from Wethersfield High School. These gentlemen have kids. They graduate from Wethersfield High Schools and schools. My kids go to the school. Um, Uh, I have a truck, they, these gentlemen have few trucks. They deliver United States Post Office mail, mail, and I deliver pharmaceutical to, uh, well, to the pharmacies, to the hospitals, I deliver medicine, drugs, all legal drugs. <laughs> so uh, we park there since we live close by. I live in the condo association next door. These gentlemen live across the street, not street, Gulf Road. So we all nearby, and we leave. We leave in the morning to uh, to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. So we were told by the uh, court decision that we have to apply for the special permit to park our trucks. I have been parking there more than ten years, and Andrew and Igor have been parking there a little bit more than seven years. They came right after me. Before nobody ever required those permits, and um, there was there was no problems. I guess in the past or so, but I guess for the past two years, I guess, uh, I guess, well, we, we were told, but we were told by the owner that, uh, I guess, town of Wethersfield is uh, requiring such and such information or so. So we do have also have leases there. Uh, uh, we have offices space. We lease off space that we do occasionally business work, phone work, computer, and at the same time we work from, from our house. Uh, so basically, I don't see a reason why would we require to have a permit if we have a lease, but we were told we have to apply for one. So, uh, All right. thank you. So, uh, Andre, you have how many trucks? So I have one. You have one. Um, and where I'm heading is there's a, you know, there's a sketch of the number of vehicles that you. Uh, have uh, on site. So if you could just kind of go through how many total trucks we're talking about between all three companies. Uh, what do you have? You I have a, I'm on like uh, eight trucks uh, on my tr my company and start to lease in like between like two, three, sometimes four trucks like because the business sometimes grown up. The post office calling we need like more trucks and if my trucks going down in the shop, so I must request because I'm responsible for the, my roads. Like I have a contract for these people. So, so forgive me. You're Igor. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. So you've got the most of the uh, trucks. Uh, yes. Uh, I park in a positive. This gentleman because uh, I have like more trucks. Like I positive park in like in the left side. If you go on. He parks right behind the uh, storage facility. Let's put it that way. That side of it. Okay. Downhill. Downhill. And uh, Vitaly? Oh, That's me. Uh, I have one. Okay. I park uh, closer to the road. Okay. So you're Andre. That's Andrew. Yeah, I'm Andre. Sorry. Yeah, I has a just. I own like a five trucks. I, I park like on the right side. Okay. So total, I guess I'm I'm 
thinking I'm hearing roughly 15 to 20 trucks. Close to the 20 trucks, well, yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. sometimes. It, it depends on, uh, again, if, when they require more or if the truck breaks, they, they rent a budget truck, as probably it says in the notes that there's a few budget trucks. Yeah, so. They care about jobs. All right, and we're not loading them. We're just no. we just them there in the evening. Right. Okay. Well, yep. Good, Jim. Last truck so that start on the left. It's a 26, 24 feet truck, box truck. It's not uh, tractor trailers. It's Five, a six, seven, under eight. under CDL. Eight. Under CDL. Under CDL. Under CDL. Under CDL. Under CDL. So it's class six truck or class seven. I'm not familiar with those numbers. Never no, no, no. It. It's a class eight. It's a, like uh, tractor trailers. A class six, it's a box trucks like under CDL, 26,000 bucks. All right, so yeah, let me just work from. Yes. Yeah. Same. Okay. Same, same, thing. same thing. So all of your under CDL yeah, truck? Yeah. No, no CDL. What did you say, 20, how many foot box? 24, 26, 26 feet. Okay, all of you are the same? All of us. Yeah. Correct. What, all diesels? Diesels. Diesels. Yeah. So all these trucks are plugged in in the wintertime? No, so no, there's, there's no plug. No, no plug. not plugged no. in. No. Um, so they're all diesels. What? And do any of them have engine brakes on them? They no do, but we don't use them there. No jake brakes, no exhaust no, brakes? No, no, we don't, don't have it. Don't have it. it. These trucks not have a jake brakes. Engine brake? Well, engine brake, yeah, but that's, that's only when you turn it on. It's an exhaust brake? Well, yeah. yeah. Like when you drive on the highway, you hear the truck, it has that, but when you only turn it, yeah, yeah. turn it around, but there's no need for that because it's not a steep hill over there. Not my trucks not have it. My truck not have it, though. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. I, I noticed that there was this weekend I drove by, there was a large tractor trailer parked in there. What the red one? Mm, yeah, the red, red one. Red one, okay. Uh, well, uh, the story I, I heard and I heard uh, from the owner, which is he actually is the, uh, he uh, rents one of the units over there, I believe unit eight or nine, and they work on uh, sports cars, like uh, form, Formula One or so, and he's a tenant also there, and he parks there sometimes. He's not there all the time, except he's been there, I guess, for the past week. I guess they're waiting for the race or something, but uh, they work on the sport cars, uh, and uh, they transport them with their truck. But well, he's not making an application. Uh, that's not uh, from what I, no, he's not here, but from what I understand, he, uh, the owner told me that uh, he did apply with the town and the town ap uh, approved it and that uh, that he is allowed to park there and to do his business just like the rest of other uh, members that lease there because there's a there's a garage that they work on jeeps and tr uh, and cars they fix them there's a, there's a there's a wa watercraft uh, space where they fix jet skis and uh, so another guy that f uh, does uh, some uh, metal work for the gardening, uh, LED lights, installation for trucks and cars. They also use sometimes commercial vehicles to transport or so, certain things or so, but. We just only have a George. parking. George? Yeah, uh, I'd like to know why the owner isn't here for this application. Yeah. You'd have so to ask the owner that. Or our yes, representative. Uh, we were told uh, that we're the only ones supposed to be here because I guess we the, that we're applying for the, the permit yeah. and if he's needed to be here, then I guess... When, no, when I went up there today to look at it, late today, just before coming here, and I've been up there many times over the years, but only okay. a long time, uh, we approved an application for that owner and it only included a light use you know, for somebody in one of those buildings, or if you each of you own one of those, or you three of you are in one of them, you might each have one or two vehicles. But I don't think we meant to have 30, whatever, a tractor trailer in there, the whole parking lot is filled. The maintenance there is in terrible. And I don't think you've ever, I don't think he has ever followed through with the previous approval by this commission and I think, when was it, Peter? Maybe 10 years ago, 15? So, so, George, you've given us a segue. So, so, George, you've given us a segue Whatever. into Five, let's. Whatever. Uh, he, he's never followed through. The parking lot George. is full of holes. George. What? So let's let Peter go through the scenario. No, sure. right? what, what is approved on site? Right? Um, and, then we'll, and then we'll deal with these three specific tenants. Uh, that are asking for something here. Okay. So, in, in ter George, you had uh, made a, a statement about the uh, property owner having uh, not followed through with previous approvals. If you look at the 
a memorandum from Justin uh, LaFountain dated June 2nd on the second page. Uh, there's a heading previous approvals. Uh, there was a site plan approved in 2005 and another one in 2007 uh, that showed large paved parking lots with lighting, striping, drainage, uh, and as you said, uh, those plans have never been completed. Uh, so uh, there are uh, approved paved parking lot plans on file uh, which have not been uh, uh, completed so you you are correct on that point so so I'm going to ask the Commission to think about the requested use and think about the conditions that are approved albeit maybe not done yet right if they were done you know uh, would we be okay with this kind of a use of the facility uh, and and you know we could restate those previous conditions if we think that's adequate and go beyond those previously stated conditions if we think that's required of the new uses but think of it in those terms all right well to begin with i'm looking at the current zoning regulations and this is a special permit application uh, the conditions which i'm reading in the, the zoning regulations say that the entire parking lot has to be paved and it has to be totally screened without complying with the, those conditions, I don't know how this commission can grant a special permit because those were, there's no waivers here and uh, they have to comply. Uh, I know the business is there. I know that you are tenants and you're taking it because you're dealing with the landlord, but it's the landlord who has a problem here and you're a tenant of, of his. I'm sorry, That's right. but we're, we're, we're dealing with the property. And the property, in order for that type of use, which is potentially contemplated, subject to a special permit, but has to meet the zoning regulations, and then we look at some other objectives, but assuming that you meet that initial baseline of meeting the zoning regulations, so, and you don't. So, so that's not completely true in the way you apply it, correct? I mean, any applicant can come here, and they don't, and they do not comply on the day they're requesting it. So, so you, could, you could say this is an acceptable use under a special permit and put the conditions that the site needs to be paved. And that's their problem with their landlord. And so that's... that's I, I believe that's the case, that, uh, it, that it may be a proper, but it's not proper without being uh, totally paved and totally screened uh, from view because that is the, what is contained within the zoning regs. Which, which is a subsequent issue about... Um, what's the right term, use and occupancy of the site for the purpose, right? But, but this commission, if they, if they focus on, if we focus on what is the requested use and what is it that they would need to do to comply and, and make that acceptable, we need to put the conditions on that approval. I agree. Okay. Okay. That's my position. All right. So, so, so they don't, it doesn't have to be paved today. It in order to not, give, in order to give approval, Mr. if we want to take that path, I don't want to lead path. these guys astray. It may not allow ten trucks for one of these guys. Or, you know, only one or two or something. That was the original concept here with this. Not with to, this not to what further, not to further compound things. But the parking lot plans that were approved uh, were designed for passenger vehicles. They weren't designed for uh, box trucks or or other types of trucks. Heavy, so. Heavy so yeah. not only is it not paved, not screened, the plan that uh, was approved um, did not contemplate this That's type correct. of operation. I so my point would be that in addition to paving, screening, there would be at least a third uh, caveat that a, a plan uh, that is designed and ultimately constructed to support what these particular applicants are asking for would have to be submitted reviewed and approved by town staff. So that's a third thing that I would um, want to make you aware of, that they couldn't just go out and build the parking lot plan that we approved. It would have to be some uh, iteration of that that satisfies uh, the particular layout that they need. So that's just also keep that in the back of your mind. Rich? To speak to that, uh, what year, I'm sorry, it was several years ago that that was approved? 
2005 and again in 2007. So standards, of, I can't answer the question, but just I've seen another project with heavy truck, everything's worth, then they get into the whole oil separator in these parking lots, a whole different standard nowadays. And I don't know if what we approved would even be, would fly right now for this application because you said it was a car application. No, they'd have to submit a revised plan. Rich, I think you had a question. Yeah, I guess my question would be, you know, we're talking about we're talking about a number of things, but one of them is the use, and, and I just wanted to get a better handle on things like, you know, what times of day you're leaving, what times of day you're coming back, whether the people, you know, because, I mean, as industrious as you are, you can't drive 10 trucks all at once. You know, do the, exactly. do the people that are driving the trucks for you, do they park there during the day? Do they of park the truck somewhere else? So, so how, how basically does it Especially operate? Especially my contract, like I have like two trucks, like leaving like 1.45, 1.55, like in the morning. Another one, like I have appointment like three o'clock and rest trucks like coming like out like before five o'clock in the morning. So come back. Somebody coming like eight o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock, and ten o'clock. So usually, you know, it's like my trucks. Like we tr we are parking all day over there. Like usually, all day we stay parking over there. I we're not, we're not operate. I'm not operated like for the daytime. Okay, but the but the people that are driving the trucks, do they park their cars there while they're yes. doing? Yeah, yeah. They switch, switch their parking lot. If you see, like they have it, like pull out the truck, pull, pull it back, like his car in the same place. Okay. We not make mess like the whole thing in a, in a parking lot. I leave around 4.30, 5 o'clock, come back uh, sometimes 8, 9, sometimes I come back in the uh, late afternoon. It depends how far I have to go. Uh, but uh, just if I, if, if I may uh, respond to Dan Silva question, I, I can't speak for the, uh, for the owner. Uh, you mentioned screening, I guess, trees and all that. Uh, it, uh, what do you guys require towards screening? There's plenty of trees around it, from the road and from the side. From from you know, I don't know if you've been there, you've seen it. But uh, what do you guys would would, would require? I think and uh, the original approval and said what it should be. And it, it's really up along the bank, and uh, it can't be deciduous trees. It probably ought to be more you know the conifer with the evergreens in the winter that still. You know, don't show the parking lot. Okay. And, you know, well, I don't know if you're going to have to pave it or not, but I would think that's you would have to do a up lot to him, I guess. What's there, not just those two piles out back that haven't been spread. That well, that's he just he just got it because uh, I guess it, uh, you noticed it today, I guess, or yesterday. I guess he got some uh, harder uh, rock and all that just to cover up some holes and all that. But uh, from my knowledge, and as it says on one of the papers, I assume everybody has it uh, that. Uh, that building and the property been there since 65 or so and it always been as a commercial use building even in the past uh, they used uh, heavy equipment uh, trucks and uh, they did some mail also over there and there were trucks always parked there before from my knowledge and from what the owner said but uh, Returning to the uh, question, the, uh, the answer you're saying that uh, it, it was required for the smaller cars and trucks to be parked there, we were n never mentioned that and all that. But again, once we became tenants and all that, we asked them, yeah. can we park there? He said yes. But then with the court decision, they said we had to be here to apply for a special See, that permit. that may be the fault of the owner not telling you what your, the limits might be and what the approvals were and what should have been done, and he didn't do it. and. Uh, He's kind of asking you guys to come in here and ask for something that may not be able to be uh, done because you don't have the first stuff done as they've indicated over well, here Well, it's not he's asking, it's the court that asks because we actually went to the court and I guess court says that, yeah, that be here to well, apply for a special permit. wasn't done and uh, it was approved, uh, what did you say, 15, 14 years ago? And they ne he never went ahead and did the things necessary to screen that back area and make it look decent. Uh, uh, the I can't comment, but from, yeah, from what I heard, I guess, from the way it was years ago, 60, from 60s or so, it was the same thing. And I guess from my knowledge, he says that uh, it's not required to be so because 
it's not uh, right re not that's that's what I get understand but uh, yeah. well, he, he, he yeah, was not telling you the truth <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't so, know so uh, like we're we're here talking to them yeah but it's the owner who is not being right. compliant because it's up to the is it up like I'm just clarifying I'm making sure is it up to the owner to tell them what they're allowed to do yes yes right so then yeah, Lisa. Lisa. all right so I don't know I, I don't see why yeah. we're yelling at them right no no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. again I, I feel I feel bad like this is this is awkward what it is I, I, so I'm just trying to so figure out so we're, we're talking to them and well, I mean, what are we going to get out of this? I guess, I guess what, it, what it, I mean, the reason I asked the question I did is so that I could get a handle on what it is, you know, we understand the paving, we understand the screening. I just wanted to understand the operation so that, you know, assuming we were comfortable with the operation that, you know, the ball would have to be put back into the landlord's court to take care of the site work, you know, that would be necessary to, you know, to be comply. fully comply, right. Um, and, and so we didn't get to the third one. Andre, uh, Andre, right? You didn't describe your operations. Yeah, my, uh, I'm leaving. My truck working like uh, they started from uh, between 3 o'clock, 3, 3.30, they leaving and came back before a.m., before uh, afternoon. Mm -hmm. Depends how traffic. Right. Thank you. For, for the record, there are two pieces of correspondence from um, <clears throat> Mr. Tartaglia. The first one dated uh, May 17th, where, uh, to summarize, he is supporting his, um, his applicants and uh, suggesting it is appropriate use for the site. Um, that's effectively what he's, he's saying. <clears throat> and then he provided an email correspondence. Uh, it appears that he's responding to a memorandum from Justin uh, more recently on June 2nd. And I'll just go through it because he asked that his email be read into the record. That all commercial trucks parking on the property are attendant to written leases of the, of the tenants before us. Uh, we are not aware that any building or zoning regs that relate to puddles, so I'm guessing that uh, Justin made some reference to the condition of the parking lot. Um, the, company, the company has never been cited for violation of ZR 6.2G, uh, which regulations post-dates the certificate of occupancy. Uh, since I haven't read Justin's, I, I don't know exactly what that means, but. I just want to make sure it gets in the record. The property has never been cited for any violation related to dust. He's also not aware of any written standards and specs relating to dust. We're not aware of the property ever having been cited for any violations uh, to the terms of parking allotment. So too many, too many vehicles. And we are, this is he again, we are not aware of the term parking allotment uh, within the certificates of occupancy. All right, so that's Mr. Tartaglia's response to Justin's recent comments and of course there are descriptions of each of the three tenants proposed usage in the uh, in the record as well oh and um, <clears throat> mr. Melnick also provided a, uh, a list of folks who appear to have been in support of let's see one two fourteen fourteen names most of which right schoolhouse crossing that's and sawmill crossing that's all part of the the adjacent um, condo complex, right? Those are all the addresses. For, so 14 names over there. Do we have any more questions of the tenant? Because I'd like to get to the public's thoughts. Would that happen? So if you gentlemen would have a seat for a moment and uh, just let us ask if anybody is here to speak on the application. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was here for the last one. You have to be here for this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, there is a third, I guess. Um, and once again, just introduce yourself for the record. Sure, I'm Lynn Burdick. I live at 58 Tinsmith Crossing. Thank you. And I've lived there for almost 30 years. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this because I've been here before. Um, we were here a couple years ago and they were trying to um, 
there was a repo company. They were going to uh, repossess vehicles. And it was the same type of problem. This gentleman, the owner, um, has not followed through on anything that you gentlemen and ladies have asked of him. He goes around the corner and tries to have other people come in and do his dirty work. He cut down all the trees on the left-hand side of the, um, the parking lot in the back. Um, and it's his, his building and his property, so he, he has that right. But what it did uh, for the crossing, which is the development with 172 units, mm -hmm. is it opened up the whole parking lot to all those people going down the hill and on the bottom. Um, <laughs> he, um, we, he's had trucks in there on and off. Every time he gets his hand slapped, he asks, he'll remove them for a while, and then they come back. These box trucks, these uh, budget box trucks have not been there the whole time. I've been there 30 years, and I've never seen those until the last six months or so. He had trailer trucks in there, and he had his, haps, his hand slapped for that. And finally, the trailer trucks were removed, and then the box trucks were put back in. So um, I speak as a unit owner, and I, th I think it's ridiculous that the man has been able to get away with this. He's supposed to be putting up screening so that when people drive down, the, down that road, they don't have to see the dirt and the muck and the, the buildings um, in, the, in the disarray that it's in. So I would strongly recommend that this not be approved. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions. How, how close do you live to this? And the reason I'm asking is, you know, they're talking about when their trucks come and go. It's like, yeah. is, it, is it noticeable or is I it I live on, um, there's some other people here that live closer. I live on, the, uh, on Tinsmith, which is if you go by his parking lot and you take a right, I live down the bottom, halfway down the bottom of the hill. So I don't necessarily hear it. I know other people have said that they've heard noises up there. Um, I can't speak to that honestly because I don't hear it myself. Do you hear the Berlin Turnpike noise more so? Or? Um, it's actually, it's kind of muffled because there's, you hear it, but it's muffled because there's trees. Right. So it blocks the noise from coming forward. So, um, but there's also a lot of development down on the corner of, um, let's see, Arrow Road and Russell Road. You know, they've cut down all the, the property, um, all the, the um, trees and so forth on that corner, and they're trying to sell that off. So we get a lot of people that, instead of going all the way down and taking a left to get on the Berlin Turnpike, they come down Russell Road, and then they go down the hill, down Arrow Road, so they go by that whole area. So. How has it been since uh, those trees were cut? I noticed they've grown up when I went over there today. Do they screen when you come up toward the top of the hill, which is yeah. where you um, see it? It's it, not really. It's they haven't grown. Really. I mean, it's only not been a couple years. Yeah. It's only been a couple years, so they really haven't. I mean, eventually, if they were left to grow, they probably would fill in again. Yeah. But and they're big trees with. And they show through where yeah. the base yes. of the trees are. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for going up yeah. and looking at it, because it's at least I feel like somebody's looked at it, and so you you have a good visual of what it what it looks like to the community. I mean, there's 172 people in there, and, and a lot of us have been there for 30 years, and um, I understand the gentleman has property and he wants to make a profit from it, but he doesn't follow the rules. And the fact that he can get away with it is really frustrating to all of us. So, okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Mary Rom, and I live at 10 Tanner Crossing, and I've lived at the crossings for a little over 17 years. And I have to agree with everything Lynn said. It's like, we're not anti-business, and we don't want to see this man not make a profit. But in the entire time I've been there, I think we've been here to planning and zoning meetings uh, several times, a handful of times. And the things that do get approved get approved with contingencies. And they're usually the screening and the paving of the lot. And that never, ever happens. And I couldn't agree with Lynn Moore. It's like he, 
you tell him what he has to do to make the lot acceptable for whatever application is coming in, and then he doesn't do it, and then they park there anyway. You know, we've been looking at, we looked at uh, tractor trailers for years. I mean, you can see them from the Google Earth satellite photos. They were there for so long, no matter when they took those photos, <laughs> they were there. Now it's the box trucks, you know? And, and when he got his hand slapped for the, the tractor trailers, um, and they removed them. He put a big sign up on the gate that said uh, parking by permit only and that violators would be towed. Well, I don't see any permits on anything. It's private property, so I didn't like walk right up to any vehicles or not, but there's nobody in there with a permit on their vehicle. Suddenly the lot is full of box trucks. The turnover was like weeks, you know, just a few weeks. So he's, he's working the system. I feel really bad for these gentlemen because um, he sent them, once again, like Lynn said, to do his dirty work. You know, he can't get an application through here. So he, he's taking these people to the cleaners. And I don't know if he's expecting you to pave the lot. And, and the screening, there's no screening. Thank you for driving by. Seriously, it's been like that since I moved in. There's a handful of anemic little hemlock bushes that the deer go to town on and a couple of trees that nobody takes care of. So they, and they're deciduous. So there's uh, essentially no blocking at all, ratty ass chain link, oops, sorry, that fence. <laughs> it's, you know, it looks terrible. Yeah, and I'm not averse to having a business in there or seeing some, some parking in there of trucks, but there really does need to be screening. And there is none, and there hasn't been in the 17 years that I've lived there. So, you know, if you want to approve something, maybe he could step up and pave the lot and put some screening up first before you approve something. And I feel really bad that he put you in this position. I truly do. But it's like, I, I, I hope you will vote to not approve this. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the landowner. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Nella DeBose, and I live at 9 Tinsmith Crossing, which is at the top of the hill. And that lot is in my, my, my balcony overlooks that lot. Um, thank you for bringing up the screening and, and the noise and all that, because we do hear the trucks uh, when they leave in the morning. I don't know if it's their trucks, because there's, there's a lot of trucks there. Um, screening this time of year, it isn't too bad, because there's leaves on the trees. But once those leaves fall, all we, we just look at a bunch of trucks. So that definitely needs to be improved. And again, I feel very bad for these guys. I didn't realize they've been parking there for 10 years. Um, do you own the budget trucks, though, or? Sometimes I was going to use it. When the truck broke down, my truck broke down, it was in the garage. I have to use the budget truck. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of budget trucks there now. Of course. They have, like, I have, like, uh, like four or five trucks every day. Oh, wow. I yeah. I have, like, the contract, like, for the Proof like a couple of years, like, and you start to buy like all of these trucks. Like, so for me, better like using them, like, the rental truck. Okay, but you're not adding trucks then. You're I'm an old truck, so. I mean, you're, you're adding more trucks yeah. than what's there now? No, not now. Not, 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 not. Before Christmas time, first of all. Okay, and right now, as you enter um, the lot on the left side, where there used to be trees that were uh, taken down, do you plan to move? Any trucks there? No, because then I could like I could literally spit onto to your trucks. Just like close to the building, they move us like closer close to, to the, the building. building. This area where is it? He cut the tree. It's like you can go to drive over there. It's like door to door around. You can go. Okay. Yep. Again, I didn't realize that they had been parking there, so I do feel bad for them, but. Um, it is a nuisance. It is noisy, and it is very unsightly. How noisy? When? <sighs> Early in the morning, you hear the car. The, and again, I don't know if it's their trucks, but you, you hear trucks starting the trucks up. Trucks on and the lot you, there. I'm sorry? Trucks at that lot. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, my bedroom window is on that side. Um, so yeah, you hear them starting and then you know going out over the rocks and the stones and whatever. And again, what? I don't know if it's them. There's How early in the morning? Uh, it wakes me up, um, I'm like three o'clock in the morning and stuff, various times of night. And again, there were other trucks. It might be the, the big tractor trailer. I don't look out the window to see which one it is, but you do definitely hear them. 
I wish my neighbor Carol were here because that's her biggest complaint. She's at 7 Tinsmith. And her biggest complaint is, is the noise that she hears them all the time. No, uh, if, if, if I might, uh, actually your neighbor, she's She did not, she, say, that's not, no, 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 is it Carol Murphy? Uh, number seven, she, one, she signs, I want What's call. her name? Uh, she, she said she's a sister or something. Yeah, she's the and sister. She she's not <laughs> Carol Murphy. <laughs> Carol Murphy is the owner. <laughs> yeah. Carol, that, her sister is Susan, who's okay, staying with Carol temporarily. Yeah. I know that. So I, wanted, I did want to talk to you also to explain the situation. Yeah. Because a lot, I know, understand a lot of people who live there, which I do live there also. Oh, Bible, I know, yeah. And they're not familiar with what's going on. I want to actually to explain the situation. But yeah. Yeah, Susan, you know. Susan's, uh, she's a sweetheart. She's a little dingy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> and then she told Carol, and Carol was livid yeah, about it. I spoke with someone, but I don't remember. Then you you spoke with Susan, Susan. I know. Yeah, I know, but it's not the owner. It's okay. it's her sister who's okay. there temporarily. Yeah. Um, sister used right. to live there. Thank yes, you. thank you. Yes. May I? I don't know. Uh, yep. Yep. No. Uh, my name is Jennifer Glick, and I live at 32 Potter Crossing, and I've lived there for. I think 16 years now, longer than I thought. <laughs> um, but I, again, I feel badly for my neighbors too. Um, I was not aware that they had been parking there for 10 years, but I think the main issue is that the, uh, the stipulations made to this owner, Mr. Tartaglia, have not been enforced at all. He's getting away with it. So even if you granted permits for the parking and left it to the um, to my neighbors to, to handle this problem, it's nothing's going to change. And I have to say, the place is a mud pit. It is an eyesore. There is no screening. The, the gate that supposedly blocks the entrance exit swings out onto Russell Road. There have been times when I've been driving down Russell Road and the, and the, the gate is it's swung out into the middle of the road, and it's a narrow road. Is it ever locked? I don't think so. I have. Or is it just a decoration? After the last time he got his hand slapped in the tractor trailer, so then he put the sign up and locked the gate, and then uh, within a week or two, the lock went away. So I've the, never the seen it. The gate is so little used, it's just like a decoration. Right. That yeah. Sits open. And I feel for, for my neighbor here who lives. I, I live right down the hill from this particular lot. You live a little bit closer. Um, I do hear the trucks periodically. I can't say that I'm wake, awakened every morning, but I do hear the trucks. Um, it's not a pleasant uh, environment to pass and, and uh, call your neighborhood at all. And, and, and this gentleman can get away with not following through uh, with the stipulations. Um, <laughs> I'm really discouraged with the town of Wethersfield as a taxpayer and as a citizen. It's not fair. So, thank you. Any, anyone else? All right. Oh. Good evening, Lorraine Zera, Z-E-R-A, at 19 Potter Crossing and I'm an original owner for about 30 years now. Um, when I moved into the, op, into the community 30 years ago, um, I've really not seen box trucks and trucks, um, the volume of them in that area until very recently, within the last number of years. And my concern, in addition to all those that have been mentioned, is going forward, let's say that um, Let's say that the parking lot is paved and the screening is there. My question is, how many trucks do you allow in that area? I mean, he has renters. I don't know how many are in that building. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that, you know, if, you're, if you're, you're leasing or renting, you're allowed X number of trucks. I just don't know how many that is because right now, I mean, there's so many of them right now that, you know, if you add another 30 or 20, as they've said, I mean, does that add up to like 50, 60 trucks in that area, which is a fairly small area? I don't know. 
So my concern going forward with all this, you know, should he even comply is we were talking about passenger vehicles and now we're into the box trucks and trucks. How much would the town of Wethersfield allow that small area to even to even keep? And that's just a concern going forward that I would have. You've got the oil spillage from the trucks, potentially things like that. And um, I think that would be a concern of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Seeing nobody else from the public, um, gentlemen, or just one of you, if you want to just come up and answer some additional questions. Yeah, George? I, I want. Can we have Justin uh, come up here for a minute? Can he testify, or won't you allow him? Yeah, Do we have to pay him. Yeah. Oh, so Justin, just. You want to May I just? Justin, did we ever collect on this November 18, 2015 letter that you sent? I mean, $100? Uh, okay, yeah, so. Did we collect 100 or even? Or just to, nothing? well, first of all, Justin LaFountain, Zoning Enforcement Officer, Town of Wethersfield. Um, so that letter back from 2015 is what started the whole enforcement process. So what happened was um, it was initially appealed to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but that appeal was withdrawn. So we took the case to court and over the course of just a little over a year, uh, we had the whole trial and everything like that uh, in probably April. Whenever we got the decision back, um, we were granted $50 per day since that date to the date of the judgment um, came to about $22,000 in fines, uh, in addition to our legal costs that we had accrued throughout the... And has the town been able to collect it, though? We put a lien on the property for it. Um, okay. Now we're going through the process of... Essentially what's happening is now the owner of the property has appealed it to the Connecticut Appellate Court. So now yes. we... Yes. So now we have to Do go you through think that. You can win? I can't speak for him, uh, but it was a uh, it was a very fortuitous judgment from the superior court on behalf of the town, um, and that of course is what prompted the application here today because the uh, the judgment came across that said needed to comply with the zoning regulations, which of course is why they're here before you. Okay. Thank you very much for the history. No on. Absolutely, appreciate it. Yeah. Are the are the things that they're applying for a special permit for the things that you cited him for in the first place or are they Correct. different trucks and Correct. So? The uh, well, can you clarify the question a bit? Um, no. are they the same trucks? Are well, no, asking? I mean cuz I you know, you, we've heard about tractor trailers mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. and you know Okay, so yeah, maybe I can elaborate on that a bit. The the tractor trailers that have been coming up, they were there at the start of this enforcement order and they were removed. Um, he said he did that in a good faith effort to comply with the town regulations. Um, so that happened, but of course the rest of the remainder of the trucks were still there. Um, so that's that's why we went through with the court case. Okay, uh, George. Also, there are, uh, as was mentioned, uh, some other trucks, not a significant number of them, uh, that belong to some of the tenants, other tenants in the building. There's a leaf guard. There yeah. was the tractor trailer. The tractor trailer. Yeah, there is a couple of other tenants that were approved, and, and they have trucks as well as passenger vehicles uh, that are associated, obviously, with their tenancy. So there was a couple of comments about some other trucks, but um, the lion's share, uh, 20 to 24 at, at any particular time, uh, are related to the three applicants that are here tonight. So, okay. so thanks for that clarification. 20 to 24 current trucks? I think we've counted 24 <clears throat> on occasion when we've gone up there roughly, but the, as was testified by the applicants, they are talking about 19 or 20 trucks in total between the three uh, uh, trucking businesses uh, that are uh, part of this application tonight. All right. So while, while you know, you're doing the talking, could you uh, remind the commission what the parameters were of the prior approvals, what the conditions were? Because again, I, I have it in my mind that <clears throat> we should be considering this 
strictly from the viewpoint of the application, which is, is in, again, in my mind, is this industrially zoned property um, the right place and an appropriate place for storing trucks? If it's appropriately screened, paved, et cetera, et cetera, is it an appropriate use for the zoning here? Um, and whatever restrictions we put on them, the, the owner will have to do or he will be subject to continuing uh, enforcement actions, right? It's, um, so I, I guess I would strongly recommend that we consider the application on its merits and put the, put the criteria to it. There are pre-existing ones, maybe we should change them, but start with describing what it is that we approved before. So you, you, two different things, there's a couple of approvals and then you talked about the zoning. So this property is located in the BP, which is the business park zone. It is the only zone in town uh, that allows trucking or freight operations with complete visual screening of equipment and materials by special permit. No other zone in town uh, could anyone even apply. So just to set Thank the parameters, you. it is the only zone in town, and there are not a lot of uh, business park zones in town. Uh, the second part of your question pertained to the previous approvals. Um, the uh, first approval, which was application 1497-05, uh, which was uh, for the existing tenancy. Uh, there was a, a parking lot plan um, which had a, a row of arborvitaes along the, um, uh, yeah, along the road uh, per se. That was the extent of, of, the, of the landscaping required at that particular time. Then again in 2007, uh, which is application 1600-07, uh, um, there was a very detailed and elaborate uh, site plan that was approved. It had uh, a very clearly defined parking lot. It had islands. It had uh, landscaping in the islands. It had uh, pole lighting, and it had an elaborate uh, a landscaping plan that had trees in the landscaped islands, and it also had a mix of evergreens and deciduous trees, once again, along the road to screen uh, the parking lot uh, from from view, so but uh, no paving. Uh, both had paving. Oh, okay. oh no, no, both uh, clearly uh, there was uh, two different paved parking lot plans approved for this property, and those did not contemplate trucking like this. These were passenger, you know, these were for the tenants of the building. Right. So um, it's this is a light use truck idea conceptually based upon my history. Okay, I mean, they're not tractor trailers, so, right? Yeah, they're truck box trucks, right? By the owner and you know, you know kind of thing. Uh, the, the leaseholder, rather. I'm sorry. <coughs> all right, thank you, Peter. So <coughs> the param. Uh, all right, so the parameters are a paved parking lot with a well-screened and actually a well-defined parking lot. So we have some place to start in terms of, uh, you know, criteria if we were to move ahead with this. Go ahead, Jim. I was just asking for your history on it to refresh my memory. The, uh, that building, the original use of the tool and die company? Arrow, <coughs> Arrow tool. That's all that was there. That's my understanding. Yes. I mean, that, so the testimony that there was, there were trucks like this parked in this, on this lot since 1965 or 68 or whatever, uh, I think uh, in court that was, uh, proven not not to be accurate and this activity is obviously different than that and they were required to come in uh, I don't know if some of the neighbors who've lived there for 30 years can also maybe testify to you know what's been happening over there back in in obviously you know it's, it's longer than 30 years ago but nevertheless um, my understanding of the history of this is this kind of activity in this part of the property never occurred to the extent that this is happening now so I just have a quick question of Justin. Um, relating to the current litigation and the decision, are these gentlemen defendants in that action? No. They're not? No. The, the owner is the defendant? Correct. The judgment is against the owner? That's correct, yes. Thank you. Did you have a question? All right. Well, thank you, Justin. Thank you. <clears throat> Your turn. <laughs> All right. 
questions for the applicant? Additional okay, questions? A quick question. Um, do you have office space in the facility or are you just renting the parking lot? Office space. All well, three businesses have office space in there? Yes. Awful quiet. Okay. Well, I guess my, my dilemma is that, you know, if if we can convince ourselves that this is an appropriate use at this site, if the parking lot were done properly and if there were appropriate screening both for visual and, you know, n reduction of noise impacts on the neighbors, you know, how can we make sure that, you know, un unlike the last three times, you know, that the work actually gets done here. Um, I mean, un unfortunately, you know, they're the applicants and, you know, if, if the work isn't done, you know, they would be the ones who would suffer the consequences, but, you know. So, so in answering your question, because it probably help, it would help me as well, what exactly would be the next steps in the process? Would that be fair, right? So, if if this commission gave approval the owner would have to the owner would have to make the improvements before the town will do what give them a is it a certificate of occupancy what what is it that the town gives these three applicants if we were to give them an approval permit to do what they're doing right. exactly right <laughs> and so they won't and so that won't happen right can I ask Peter another question? To Taglia, talk to you guys. Uh, Mr. Tartaglia, uh, I didn't. I didn't talk to him today, but he was in in our office. Jim. No, no, he was in our office today. He has. Uh, he filed a Freedom of Information Act uh, request uh, against uh, me for the information in the file, which I'm not sure why he needed to do that, but. Um, so I have, I have. So you wouldn't give him information. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. He filed it in advance of asking me. So, um, so we do, we do talk to him on occasion and and have have talked to him. It's primarily via email, um, but but not personally. Uh, uh, well, he does stop in the office on occasion. Not even a letter of any sort. Or well, he submitted a letter, and he sub I mean, you, in your packet, uh, you've had several pieces of correspondence from him. Um, so. Um, we do communicate with him via those means. So, yeah. so are you are you asking me if you would like me to reach out to him in regards to some of these? Is that where you're going with this? I think I would. I think uh, we deserve the right of some communication with him about what he wants to do here and how he's disappointed his uh, tenants. Shouldn't we have to vote on the merits of this application? Yeah. I mean, and to me, I think this application, you know, there's not enough information here to really make a vote on this application. We don't know about the parking lot, the, the handle truck traffic, uh, drainage in terms of the oil leakage, screening. Uh, if we were to vote on this application, the way I see it here, I might be against it, but there's just not information here to, to make a favorable vote. No oil leakage. <laughs> <laughs> you can go on the oil, each truck and check it out because we do maintain them. That's number one because it has to be on the road. If it's oil leakage, then the truck will stop somewhere in the middle, in the middle of the road or whatever, and uh, it could be a big problem for us. But we do maintain them. And our screenage, uh, as you see some pictures, uh, the streets. But even just for my knowledge, I would like to know what's the good screenage. More trees, bigger fence. How big the fence can you put it? It's on top of the hill. Even if you put a six-foot fence, you're still gonna see the trucks, the roofs, and all that. So from what my knowledge. Most of the towns, not just Weathersfield, will not even allow bigger fence from the road higher than six feet. Then it's going to look like a prison. And if you maintain those trees, if you cut them down, then it's going to be <coughs> more visual. So it's better if the trees look kind of sloppy in a way, let's put it, but it will close some of the... I think you're hearing concerns with the mission here. <laughs> I would have to take that. It's up to you. And yeah. When you see this information here, it's certainly not, uh, in my opinion, enough to vote on, or if it is... This is the application that would definitely not be uh, my, my initial reaction coming in before I listened to the testimony um, is I didn't understand and have a full flavor of the situation would be to grant it subject to the conditions to meet all the zoning regulations, mm -hmm. okay, including having fully paved, 
a screen subject to the approval of the uh, of staff uh, to, to protect everything. But in effect, that is benefiting an individual, not these individuals, benefiting the owner who has been violating our zoning regulations with impunity for all these years. And I can't see rewarding the owner of the property with anything at this point in time. I agree. I mean, that's the problem. I feel bad for these guys. But uh, to do something to uh, potentially reward the owner of the property for ignoring everything that the town has done and the courts have already decided and it's on appeal, uh, I'm not sure the merits of the appeal except to waste time. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I don't know the facts, so I, I can't say that. Uh, I think is wrong. Do we, I mean, does I anyone see any value in continuing this so that either the applicants or staff can communicate with the owner and say, you know, come in with a legitimate site plan showing how you intend to comply with zoning regulations, you know, for this, really. for this proposed use and you know, if it's radio silence, then we know that, you know, we're wasting our time by asking to have something done that hasn't been done for the last 10 years. But if there is some, you know, good faith movement on, on the part of someone to, you know, figure out how to, how to do drainage and paving and, you know, plant some actual trees. I don't want an eight foot high fence any more than anybody else does, but to at least move in the direction of complying with the regulations or, or the requirements of the regulations that apply to this potential use. Um, you know, at least we're not wasting their time, um, you know, by saying your landlord isn't doing you justice. You know, we're sorry you're denied without at least giving the opportunity for someone to step up and, and do that. So, so you could tell by my comments that I was, you know, assuming, assuming others felt as I tend to, which is that this is consistent with the zoning of the area. Um, as long as they do the, as long as they follow through with the conditions, I, I tend to think it's an okay use, right? And I was uh, leaning toward <clears throat> Um, being comfortable with the plans as they had been submitted once before. But I must admit that, to Tony's point, they're not in front of us. We haven't really reviewed them consistent, you know, the plans as they were consistent with what the use is right now. Maybe the islands aren't in the right place if they're going to be, you know, parking box trucks, if that's the plan today. Plus, They've cut down all plus, the trees since then. So, so, you know, saying or continuing this whole discussion, continuing the public hearing, et cetera, reaching out to Tartaglia, the property owner, or simply, you know, going, just telling the applicants, you need to get your landlord on board to make a proposal as to what is it that you would do, what would the property owner do to make it consistent with your application so that we can be comfortable uh, moving forward or not, right? But, but right now, the, the plan is, was approved before probably isn't completely consistent with this, so. I, I just want to make sure that everybody just doesn't say no to this just because we have a property owner that grates on us, right? Because that's not going to work well for us, bottom line. From my perspective, the commission has three reasonable options. One option is denial of the application mm -hmm. as, as it stands. Another option is continuing the hearing uh, seeking to um, have the owner uh, of the property come in and appear and join the application as a party to it and uh, you know make certain commitments to us that we could embody in you know resolution that, that uh, would, would approve the application with conditions and the third uh, thing that we could do is uh, approve the application as made subject to the the three conditions that uh, you know were outlined by our town planner, coupled with a time limitation to that zoning approval, uh, that would uh, uh, limit 
the, the length of that, of that approval so that we could assure that, number one, these gentlemen would have time to move their operations elsewhere in the event the owner did not follow through with necessary you know, uh, improvements, and three, to allow reasonable time to allow the owner to make those improvements, but us to be assured that they're going to get done. So, so I'm going to I think those are the three, the three reasonable options that we've got. So the first two, I completely agree with. The third one, however, would go against what I, and it's where I started to ask Peter before about the process going forward. I don't think even a whole discussion of timing is even necessary because the approval is contingent upon the conditions being met. And they never get approval until such time. So what happens tomorrow, if we were to approve this tonight, what would happen tomorrow? What would be the town's next step? It's going to complicate <laughs> I think number three you know, would make it I don't, very, I don't, I don't very think complicated it. and subject to potential litigation down the, down the line because it's too vague. So I would not agree. I could not agree uh, to I don't, I don't think number I don't, three. I don't think the time element applies because it's simply we would not be ever giving them a an approval. Go ahead. You can start doing what you're doing legally, right? Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I guess, you know, in, in my simplistic view, continuing with the opportunity to come back and show that you intend to comply with the requirements of the regulations for what it is that you're asking for, um, you know, if, if that fails to happen, then I think the basis for denial is much stronger, which is, you know, it's not a paved parking lot. There is no screening. We don't have to get into minutia about how quickly something was done uh, or not. And, you know, as, as much as I would like to accommodate, you know, hardworking, honest business people, um, you know, we have 10 years of conditions and stipulations that, that haven't been met. And I, I don't want to have them become burdened by, you know, the failure to comply with any future <coughs> conditions and stipulations that might come along. Yeah, I agree with Commissioner. I mean, we can judge something that's face value without any bias of whatever's happening in, beyond this. Uh, I think, again, we're requesting a site plan like any other application. And I would agree that we would, uh, you know, give them uh, potentially another month or whatever it is to extend this to give them an opportunity. That's a good question. How long are we going to allow him to get back to us? Uh, well, I agree with Commissioner Roberts. I agree. Just like the last applicant did, a full plan of what the parking plan is, the photometrics plan, the whole the whole bit, so we know what needs to be done. I mean, like the drainage question I have, I mean, I don't know the answer to that. If, if we just leave it to the owner of the property to come back at a reasonable time, we're never going to see them. What's a reasonable time? The, the, hmm? This will extend him until next month. Right? I mean, yeah. You have, you have uh, usually, usually it's 30 days to keep the hearing um, makes sense. open. I mean, that gives you, gives him two meetings or thereabouts um, to come back or give us at least an indication if he's, if he's willing to work on that. And then you can decide at that point in time whether it's worth continuing it further based on his, his response. Rich, you want to make a motion to continue the hearing? Well, I, I would. But I would only make a motion at this point to continue it to the next meeting because if there's no expression of interest, then I don't see any point in dragging it out till July when we only have one meeting sometimes and people might be on yep. vacation. The owner is known to procrastinate. Yeah, no that's fair. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to attribute any behavior or motivations to the owner. I mean, I, I just kind of want to be done with it. Keep this on a short leash so that we don't waste these gentlemen's time. Mm -hmm. You know, if Yep. the property owner or they are unable to comply, you know, come in with a compliance site plan. Okay. So I'd make a motion to continue the hearing to the Second. June 20th. I think that's, that's, the, that's the next, yes, June 20th, okay. next meeting. George seconded it. And, right. and the purpose of the continuation is to encourage dialogue with the owner and the applicant to, you know, demonstrate in some kind of site plan that complies with the requirements of the regulations, particularly <coughs> pavement and screening. 
Okay. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you. Um, Dan, Dan, I'm going to ask you to not participate again, right? Dan. <coughs> so we'll see you next time, gentlemen. And uh, have the property owner call us, or we'll reach out to them. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so the next two items, could I uh, enter, have somebody make a motion to hear them together? Any reason not to? Help me. Make a motion that we um, hear application, the public hearings for application 1947 and 1948 simultaneously, but we have to remember to vote on them separately. Thank you. Tony, would you second? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? All right. So item, uh, item 3.3 and 3.4, would the applicant join us? <coughs> so while you're going up, these are public hearings and the applications are seeking special permits in accordance with section 4.1.B.12. Concerning uh, construction material storage uh, on lot number nine, Middletown Avenue, and another one for a special permit in accordance with section 6.1, which is for the storage of fill material on lot number four, Elm Street, 280, 280 Elm Street. Oh, yes, I'm uh, Louis Santos with Baltazar Contractors. And uh, we're going to be doing work for the NBC on that Golf Brook Road uh, sewer repair. And uh, we're looking to use uh, the properties for uh, construction purposes. And uh, that's about it. <clears throat> so could you describe your, the use of each of the sites specifically? Yes, the first one is Elm Street. Uh, there we're going to be storing materials, earth materials. It's going to be... Uh, Basically, uh, three-quarter inch stone, sand uh, process. Um, we'll be uh, depoting some asphalt over there that we're uh, excavating from the street temporarily. And then uh, basically, as we're receiving the other material, that material is going out. Um, and uh, that's about it on that, on that site. All right. <clears throat> and by the, by the looks of the... The sketch provided, you'll be keeping it with 110, within the 110 foot. Is that the complete frontage, 110 feet? And yeah, it's approximately 110, I believe, by 125. Uh, the, okay, the plan says 150, but 150, 150, 150 yeah. feet back from the property line. Right, so right. in the front quadrant of the site. Correct. In other words, you're going to go from Elm Street. How, how far back are you going to use? Really? 100, 125, 150. So I think it's like 15 feet, so like 165 from the road back. Oh, okay. So you're not, and you can't go all the way through to Middletown Ave anyway, right? And it's wet. Yeah, yeah. The stream yeah. goes there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Are you going to uh, strip the topsoil and pile that off? Yes. So there's going to be a topsoil pile in addition to the materials you just described? Correct. Correct. And we're going to silt fence everything. We're going to per our wetlands, uh, silt fence everything, and uh, anti-track pad out in the front. So, so that this is just Elm Street, I'm just asking. So are you going to store equipment down there also? No, no, it's going to be more. Well, we're going to have a, you know, like a loader there just to be able to, to load up trucks and to pile up uh, material as it comes in, and, uh, and that's it, just be one loader. So there's not going to be any kind of repair or any kind of stuff like that? No, no. no. None of the trucks just that one. Yeah, that's it. The other side is going to be more for uh, pipe material, concrete structures, uh, where it's closer to the brook, so it's really not uh, the right place to put the earth materials. So, are you going to be? Are you going to want to do? Are you going to have a need to do any uh, crushing or material reduction on that Elm Street site? No, no. With that asphalt? No, no. We have another site that we can bring that to afterwards. What are your hours of operation? 
the last question, how do you plan on restoring the property when you made your nine? Uh, we, our, our hours are seven to uh, uh, basically a town ordinance. Uh, it's going to be seven to pretty much five, uh, at five o'clock. Uh, the uh, as far as restoring, we're going to we're, once we're done, we'll clean up the site and we're going to put back the topsoil. And how many trucks will be coming in and out? Uh, it could be three, four trucks, triaxles. Per day. Uh, well, triaxles on site, so it could be could be maybe 15, 16 times going down the road per day. Each one, right? Each truck 15, 10, 15 times. Well, yeah, 10, maybe, maybe, maybe each truck 10 times, you know. So 30, 40 trips. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's the duration? Uh, this job is going to be going out for about a year and a half to two years. Starting? Uh, we're pretty much in the starting phase now. Um, we're just getting all our submittals uh approvals right now and getting everything ordered and so the next next two summers yeah next two summers yeah we're planning on working through this winter and then next winter no thank you, Monday thank you. Friday, no, weekends. no weekends not Monday through Friday and you're running helping run the line up from the, about the town line right now at Rocky Hill up correct we're, we're going from the we're going from the pump station up Middletown Avenue to Mill Street we take a left there Follow Mill across Silas Dean to Maple. Take a left there to Hewitt. Oh, that's why all the markings on Mill Street. Right, right. All the way over to Maple. Right, right. We go to Maple. How far in Maple? Uh, take a left on Maple to Hewitt. It ends right there. Oh, okay. okay. Going down Hewitt or just stop right at Maple and Hewitt? Pretty much the intersection Hewitt and Maple. That's where the uh, they're catching all the overflow. You have, you have to dig up Mill Street last year that was paid? Yeah, I heard, I've, I've heard that already a few times. Oh, sure <laughs> I think it's an MDC rule. Yeah. <laughs> they go around and follow I the paving so trucks. Oh, sorry. here's where we're going to. Yeah, wait until oh, Mill Street okay. is done. Is, um, is any of the material that's either going to be brought in or taken out for, for other projects, or is it just? No, for just for this project. No, no yeah. I mean, uh, the only reason I ask is that there have been MDC contractors that have used sites in Weathersfield for stuff that has nothing to do with Weathersfield. No, no, what, what are those, these sites will be used only for this job. Okay. Is this clean material? Yes, yeah. It's going to be... Afterwards, how, how's, that, how's that working? Well, they're, 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 this job is, there's no, uh, there's no contaminated material on this job. So, uh, and if there is, we have another site in Hartford that we're permitted for contaminated materials for storing. Uh, so it's going to be clean material coming in. The only thing that's going to, be going to be going over there is going to be the asphalt that we dig up. There's going to be temporary stockpile there. When they're bringing me the clean material, they're taking the asphalt out and the fill. So. And, and it's all being reused, right? And it's all being reused, yeah. The, well, the, 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 the material that we're taking out is not being reused on the site. We're bringing in clean fill. So as the, as the so. clean fill is being brought in, the excavated material and the asphalt is being taken out. And so this is just a temporary storage facility right. place it's a, for it. Right, it's a depot, right? And it's going to be put there, and then it's going to be there's going to be trucks taking it away. Correct, because right? it's not big enough to, to to put a big pile over there. So well, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We got we got to move it pretty much every day. Okay. So just to get so like for a neighbor or whatever that's here, about give me a dimension on this pile, height, size, and just give me. A I mean, it, pretty much maybe thirty, probably five hundred yard piles. Uh, maybe 30 by 30 by maybe 15 feet high, something like that. You guys are responsible for the road for any degree that's... Um yeah, any, any, any sweeping or dust control, we, we take care of that. And uh, I know there's one, other, one condition that we're going to basically monitor to the road, make sure there's no damage to the road. Derek, uh, in his memo, he has, he, has, he has something to that effect. Thank you. I was going to mention that, yep. And then also, as far as the uh, traffic, um, the travel way you know, to and from site, basically, you know, whatever work we do on Middletown, we'd go down Mill to Silas, go back up to Route 3, come down Route 3 to Elm. You know, we're, we're good with that. We're, we're not going to go through the, uh, the, home, the, 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 you know, the home residence over there. All right. Was so, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Yolanda. <clears throat> Um, were there any other locations you were looking at to stockpile? Well, there actually what there were actually was the uh, fun the fun zone there the, the first one. <laughs> we were actually looking uh, and uh, yeah we missed the boat on that one. Okay. 
Okay. That would have been the perfect spot. You can put it inside there. Yeah. Yeah. I called that number. I actually ended up running down the uh, the owner, and he was like, "Oh, you're a little bit too late. We're at, uh, actually somebody's actually a developers trying to get it approved." So I was like, "Okay." Spot on Arrow Road. Yeah. <laughs> Arrow Road. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about Middletown Avenue. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. Middletown Avenue. So let's talk about Middletown. Let's yeah, Middletown Avenue is basically uh, we're going to be keeping more of the uh, materials that are going to be used on the job site as far as, far as like a pipe, uh, concrete structures, manholes, um, uh, earth support equipment, and uh, parking of, say, uh, vehicles or trucks and machinery um, is going to be used for that site. So there's a gate there now. Are you upgrading that gate and or adding security of any kind down there, fencing? Or? Well, right now there's only that wire right. gate there. Right. Um, we weren't planning on putting anything there. We could put something there if it's needed. Um, I, uh, no, I was just asking if you yeah. were, if there were other. Along that same line, Peter, uh, did you have any problems with the Rocky Hill work uh, as far as security? Which is, I think, what he's getting at. Well, that's another contractor working over there. That's oh, Nickerson. Okay. Nicker have you heard they have no, they, no, you know, it seems like. Uh, you don't have anybody on site overnight on the equipment. No, 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 no. Um, so there's a memo, you alluded to it, where Derek <coughs> suggested to us that uh, we might want to consider that we restrict this construction access, uh, moving the material along Elm via Route 3, Maple, and Silas Dean rather than using Middletown. And I think you kind of implied that would be fine with you. Correct. Right. And the other one was that the applicant will be required to make repairs to the satisfaction of the town, uh, and including surface repairs and or milling and paving when they're done. Um, that obviously starts with a precondition survey and correct yeah. okay with that as well All right. other questions for the applicant two years is your outside on this job uh, I, hopefully it's gonna be less than two years yeah I'm hoping a year and a half to two years I mean uh, once the we're hoping for a substantial completion which is basically with all the excavation all the pipe work in the ground by the end of 2018 so that's a year and a half and then it's just going to be pavement restoration in 2019 which would be our fi final paving that's going to happen the spring and summer of 2019 they give you incentives to do it no unfortunately not we wish we did have some they did too. <laughs> what actually is this project it's to uh it's to uh, get rid of the uh, the overflows uh, when the when you have heavy rainstorms, mm -hmm. and you see those manhole covers popping up out of the ground and yeah. sewage In flowing. Of the fun zone? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's to uh, to to uh, to get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's uh, it's drainage uh, rather than sewer, uh, but it's going to the sewer treatment plant. Mm -hmm. both. Correct. Well, it's it's combined. It's kind of combined sewage, and you know, right. so picking up, yeah, so it's picking it up. Yeah. Right, right. It is, it is combined today. So the good question: Which are you building? Are you building the new sewer new line? New sewer. Right, and you're leaving what's right. there. Right, as we're gonna, a, it, there's a regulator structure that's going to be put at the be end of the job, which is going to uh, control the overflow. So the sort uh, of like they did up in Hartford. Correct. Yeah, pretty much. Big plant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hours of operation, number of trucks, yeah, seven. Basically, our hours are going to be seven to five. Our one of our subcontractors, uh, the tunneling contractor, that's going to be working on site for us. Their hours, they're going to be working uh, five ten-hour days, so they'll be out there seven to five, and uh, that's pretty much what our hours are going to be, uh, seven to five. What are you tunneling underneath that thing? Uh, there's. Five tunnels actually that's going on on that job. Or uh, Silas Dean is going to be open cut, unfortunately. Yeah. It's concrete. Go yeah, with concrete. Yeah, but uh, there's uh, other areas of the job that are tunneled. Yeah, I drive down Milton Avenue more. There's a lot of school kids on that road. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so concerns the morning yeah. time, it's just uh, And there's that bus turnaround. Yeah. That's, he goes into the overhead door. Rock Hill's bus comes down, turns around. And then they're going to be, the town's going to be fixing Middletown Avenue where that Jersey barrier is. Yeah, that's going to get fixed too, yeah. We'll probably end up taking care of that too. Yeah. It's like those, those spare part barriers. Throw it in. Yeah. <laughs> those, that's not, let's not call it Jersey barrier. Yeah. It's like yep. ripped up construction pieces. That's Yolanda. A way around down Elm Street. Yolanda. Thank you. So just a, a question on the Elm Street site. Um, so that site is located in the uh, floodplain? Yes. And so what is the, I don't know, I might have missed this in the discussion. So what is the contingency plan if, if there'd be like really a lot of rain and what do you do well, with that well, equipment? The, uh, if there was going to be a 100 year storm that was coming, the wetlands uh, asked us to make the uh, attempts to remove the piles. Mm -hmm. So and that's, uh, we agreed on that. So. So they would just tell you that you, you need to move them? Yep. Or do you follow the weather forecast? Or Correct. Like what's your typical way of doing it? Well, you I mean, follow if, the you mean forecast follow the weather way. forecast and uh, see what's going on. And, uh, All right. And at this point, you wouldn't know where you'd put the material? Well, we have another site in, in Hartford, like okay. I said, that so we can bring it. Plan. That, that's our backup plan, okay. right? Yeah. And just to make yourself feel a little more comfortable, probably you can put it in terms of the math. You're going to have one 500-yard pile there at, at the site? One no, there's, there's, there's probably going to be about maybe four or five 500-yard okay. cubic yard piles on the site. And, and how many, what's the yardage in a truck? You're moving 30 trucks there a day or more. What's in a truck? Well, a truck's about 17 yards. So you're moving 300 every day, right? maybe 400 every yeah, day yeah, yeah. so if you're only keeping you know it's almost almost a pile a day so it's weather was coming in it would take what four days five days a week to mm -hmm. to move it out mm -hmm. well we put more trucks at that point I mean, yeah true yeah. enough yeah, yeah. faster yeah good, good answer all right <clears throat> there are two sites I don't know if we we should probably uh, deal with them Separately, are there any additional questions for the applicant? It's actually a public hearing, too. So there's going to be four or five piles that are 30 by 30, about 15 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And the old, did I miss this? Yeah. That the area you're going to use is 150 by 110? Mm-hmm. And you're going to have this pile for the topsoil that you took off that side. Right, and if I need to re relocate that topsoil, I relocate that topsoil and I'll bring it back. So, you know, I make it work with what I got. That's the easy one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> There's a lot of farmland around there. They'll take the topsoil. <clears throat> All right. final, final questions? All right, so there are two public hearings. I will, oh, I suppose I should ask. Is there anybody from the public who would like to comment on these on these applications? Please join us. If you'll just have Thank a seat. You. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, I'm Mike Mancini. I'm the co-executor for my mother's estate. We've lived at 520 Middletown Avenue since 1955. Uh, we were prevented from moving in when we bought the house because of the historic floods. But uh, all of my brothers and sisters have uh, grown up in Wethersfield. We all graduated from Wethersfield High. And uh, we certainly want to be good neighbors with uh, the contractor. Uh, we certainly are supportive of the uh, project. Uh, it's definitely something that's needed in that area. But at the same time, I want to make sure that we have some protections against our house from any damage that may occur from the operations. Um, it, there's a couple of things. Uh, I, I did get a, a, a letter, a permit, co a copy of the permit from the Inland Wellens Commission, uh, where there was some concern about uh, the equipment being stored on site, any kind of oil leakage, uh, diesel fuel refueling of that. Uh, certainly, I'm no stranger to construction. Um, those are not things that are done intentionally, but are more accidents, and I'm sure 
Uh, Baltazar has their own quality control uh, in place to, to minimize that. But again, we want to make sure that that you know is is part of your approval if you do deem to approve this uh, application. The other thing uh, is that. Uh, the house uh, was built in the late 1800s. It's a very fragile uh, house right now. It has a, a field stone, <coughs> field stone foundation. So I'm a little bit concerned about uh, any of the vibrations that could occur uh, from either the equipment, the heavy equipment going in to <coughs> supply uh, the staging area and the equipment that would also retrieve the equipment to bring it on site uh, for installation. Uh, I have talked to the MDC about putting in a monitoring point uh, just to monitor their, uh, the vibrations that could be coming from there. But I also have a concern when uh, on staging areas, especially for a project that has a two-year duration, uh, the grass that's there now uh, certainly will be uh, killed. So the dust control is going to be a major concern. Uh, so we would like to see some, so, uh, some type of um, Part of, uh, your, again, your approval, if you do, uh, that that be implemented. And I'm sure the contractor has no problems with that. But again, I just want to go on record for that. Um, we are in the process of uh, going through the estate, and we, would, we plan on putting that house up for sale shortly. So not that I'm against. I understand construction. I know how it's supposed to go. But we would like to see if we could get some sort of a screening along the property line just to kind of not scare off any potential buyers and uh, my opinion to you would be is if we do sell it and there isn't any screening the town staff is certainly going to be getting many phone calls from the uh, prospective buyer that you know they would like to have that screening so it's kind of like a little proactive approach to it uh, to uh, you know just just help uh, that area so uh, that pretty much is, is what I would like to say. Uh, again, I am for, uh, positive for the project. I think it's well deserved, it's, it's timely, it needs to be done, but at the same time, we just wanna make sure that uh, we can enjoy the home and you know, we can not have any damage that uh, would be caused by, by this uh, project. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. I'm David Anderson of Anderson Farms, Broad Street in Wethersfield. We own approximately some 35 acres on Elm Street that we have already planted for crops, and I have one house down there. And we're very concerned with this dumping of fill on property next to us. We have about a thousand feet. We're going to get all the water run off into our fields, and we don't appreciate that plus the elm street is not a wide street it's a very narrow street it's a non-consisting road really it's never been widened since the back in the horse and day, buggy days and we have no sidewalks down there and now there is some two or three families with small children and with the farm vehicles and stuff on elm street i don't think that dump trucks should be running up and down there and dumping on land that's in the floodplains either. This is, a, this is a floodplains that was put in in 1955 after the 55 flood. We were not to move the, and dump soil on our farm or any other property down there. We could dig a hole, but we had to spread material out from that hole. And when the Jehovah's Hall built theirs, they graded their property so that the church is at a 32 feet level so they will uh, avoid high water and stuff. We in 55 had 31.5 feet and in 1984 we had 31.6 inches. Uh, there's about six houses at that time, had no water on their first floors. All the people on Elm Street, other than the Jehovah's Hall, had water in their cellars. There's two houses that had about two inches of water in one L, and there's two homes that had 
about eight inches above the molding on the first floor, and the other house that stands the lowest it has just about even with the window sills on the first floor. So I think if you put fill in there, it's not going to create a, it's going to create a more of a detriment to the property owners. You understand what I'm saying? The, the water level is, go, you're taking up square footage, so now the water level is going to be higher. So we're, we're just, uh, what should I say? Don't think that that's what the whole idea was when they put the encroachment, water encroachment lines. They wanted the open space not to be moved. They wanted people to leave the land. They didn't want you to build on it. They didn't want you to put foundations in. They didn't want a lot of things that people had to do and haven't done in that area. But my biggest concern is the traffic on Elm Street being on such a narrow street. And I don't think you're allowed correctly to, to take a left from the Glastonbury Bridge onto Elm Street. So they would have to go up to the old part of Middletown Avenue and come in from Broad Street Green and go down that way. I believe it's a no turn intersection. Uh, they may not uh, enforce I don't, it. I don't think that's that was part of the route, right? The taking a left off of that. But area. deliveries, if he's taking deliveries or guys coming off the highway, I think he's, that's what he's oh. referring to. The Glastonbury Route 3 is supposed to be, it's not supposed to turn left or right. So uh, all these dump trucks would have to go through the, the narrow streets on Middletown Avenue to get into Broad Street to come down from the green. Yeah, would they take but, uh, but not normal. There's no sidewalks so, so in that they, area would they either. So taking like Old Weathersfield and <laughs> going through there. Spring Street. Thank you for your listening to me. Mr. Anderson, before you leave, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Huh? I have a quick question for you. And you, you have a couple of years down in the meadows there, the 55 flood you mentioned. Well, I'm the third third generation. Yeah. We and, go back uh, to 1852 or 1856. So let me ask you a question. I have one more generation behind me that's right pushing me. <laughs> if you get something like the 55 flood down there. Yes. What do you, th what, what are these 500 yard stockpiles of material, what are they going to look like after the waters recede? What, what do you think? I mean, you're a land of butts it. What do you, you tell me. I'm, I'm not sure how, how much water flow for current there would be in that area, but the, there would be some. But I, I know in 55, I, we ended up, that was before I-91 was in, we ended up with about two and a half inches of silt on most all the farm in Elm Street. And in 84, we did not a end up with that silt because of the, the I-91 I barrier mm -hmm. and the Glastonbury Bridge. So we didn't get any wash, but got plenty of water. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Yep. Come join us. Hi, I'm Cindy Hughes from Old Weathersfield. Um, I just had a couple questions. Um, I wanted to know who owns the property on Middletown Avenue and who owns the property on Elm Street? And what are the permitted uses for both? So are they permitted to put these kinds of materials on these properties? And has there been anything, anything prior determined about these properties to, uh, to preclude that from happening? Mm -hmm. It's my only question. Thank you. Peter, do you know the answers? Yeah, on the so the, um, the applicant for the uh, Elm Street is Elm Street Property LLC, 66 Watersview Drive, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Uh, also known as um, the DiCiaccio, if you recall, the yeah. property on Elm Street that had been subject to a previous proposal. So that is uh, that particular property. The Middletown Avenue uh, property is owned by the Weathersfield Game Club, uh, uh, care of 186 Middletown Avenue. And are these permitted uses? 
Uh, that is a good question. Um, these are temporary uses, so um, you know it's not a permanent land use. So it, it they weren't looked at from that perspective. Yeah, they weren't looked at from that perspective. Uh, it, they were lumped in with the category, you know, subject to special permit uh, review uh, and and conditions related to the site. So uh, since they're not permanent uses, it's a, it's a different kind of a, an application than you would normally. Uh, be used to we have allowed a construction uh, you know sites in other locations uh, under the same concept subject to special permits before so that's that's how we uh, got these before you uh, today sure, yes. while she's on her way up is it just as long as we leave the site exactly the way or as is yeah it's a similar condition I mean stabilized and you know left in a in a good condition they, obviously in the one in the meadows we would want the do they need to plant or anything do they well need to right now grass? if I don't know if you got a chance to go down to the Elm Street uh, property but um, I was thinking more of the game group. yeah so that one is under cultivation right now is like similar to the surrounding uh, properties the one on Middletown Avenue actually has a gravel looks like it was used Historically, for something yeah, similar the, at the entryway, but behind there. Yeah, uh, if going pretty far back, oh. there's a there's a there's a flat, know. significantly sized area, and then there's sort of an access road that long, runs along the tree line that is also uh, gravel, and then the rest of it is grass. And somebody's been maintaining it, mowing it, so um, you're going to stay within that vegetated or unvegetated area based on your plans. I saw. The only other things I wanted to ask were um, what the zones were in these two areas. Like, is Middletown Avenue residential? Um, the Middletown, uh, at, uh, the Elm Street is uh, agricultural zone, as um, as, is, as is obvious. And then the um, the uh, Middletown uh, Avenue is a mixture of agriculture and and residential. So, so both there's of a, them there's have a, one is strictly agriculture, and the other one's mixed. Correct. And the last thing is, I was thinking about um, the most direct route for um, these kinds of materials to be trucked. Um, and I was wondering if in the Rocky Hill area, because they have a lot of industrial sites and other, th and other things, if there was any open space there for these materials, at least for the Elm Street area, to be stored um, and so that it could come directly down the Silestein Highway and, um, and that we could stay out of Elm Street altogether. That's just my last question. Thank you. We'll, we'll ask the applicant when he comes back up. You're the only one who hasn't spoken. Would you, are you here to, no? Okay, all right. Um, would you join us again then? Thank you. So, so the lingering question was perhaps <clears throat> more generically, did you look at other sites other than Elm? Elm obviously was going to be a little bit more sensitive. Yes, I did. I, I was looking for three to three weeks to a month. It's, it's not a lot of not a lot of places around. It's uh, very uh, very minute, and that's why I'm trying to I try to break up these two sites so I can keep I can keep the uh, job materials on one and bring the earth materials to another because I can't get one that can do I can do both, you know. So, so uh, what we heard from uh, one of the members of the public was concern about <clears throat> uh, dust control, water erosion. Um, street, do, do we street size? No sidewalks. So I, I'm kind of just let me just stick to the environmental side of it. What uh, is the next step if they were to give be given approval? Is there a wetland permit that they, they will go for? They did, did go already to the Wetlands Commission. I, I didn't see the actual approval letters in your correspondence. Um, I don't know that we actually got those yet, but as was testified, the location on Elm Street, uh, they did uh, attach um, conditions regarding uh, flooding events and that the material be pulled out of there. Uh, I'm not sure what other, I don't know if you brought with you uh, your no, approval I letter. I, ha I have not seen those. They did, however, get approved by uh, the Wetlands Commission. 
And so in, in that submission to the Wetlands Commission, you would have shown the four piles or five piles, right? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't show the, didn't. the amount of piles. I just showed it was storage of earth. So they, they didn't ask no, for said didn't. control plans or anything no. and approve your said control plans? No. Is that something the town staff would be looking at when the time comes? Um, I, that would that would be something we would typically want to see. Uh, you know, the extent of erosion control, any notes regarding well, dust the, control, and yeah, those the, erosion, kind of things. the erosion control was on there. The, the sill fence, the anti-tracking pad, that was all on the crafted. Middletown Avenue. But uh, we're talking about the Elm Street. That uh, there as well. Okay, well, I, I guess we didn't get that. You didn't submit that to us. All we got was the sketch that showed the 110 by 150. It just has the words on it. Yeah, so I haven't seen those. Oh, just the notes, okay. Mm -hmm. right. So the other, so that's really runoff, <clears throat> runoff and the environmental controls, uh, you know, I'm confident staff, knowing our town engineer will uh, ensure that that stuff is taken care of. The other things that we heard were um, requested a pre-construction uh, survey of the structure adjacent to this and uh, screening. Your thoughts on those issues? The, uh, I mean, we are doing some other uh, house inspections in the area for uh, some, uh, you know, blasting that we're gonna be doing up, up the street more. So, I mean, we could always do a uh, house inspection on this gentleman's as well, if that would, uh, if you'd be happy with that. And, uh, and uh, screening. Uh, uh, I'm not sure we're, what you know what kind of screening we're looking for here. Yeah. Is there going to be any, only your uh, loader? It's probably going to be the only oversized going on in there, or just the dozer and a loader? We'll Where, what there. site? What site? Elm Street. Elm, I'm sorry. Yes, the Elm Street site. Elm Street would just be a loader. Yeah, it can be a loader there. Yeah. yeah. And and honestly, screening. Screening is going to end up being five or six foot arborvitaes, right? Which, if your piles are 15 feet high, would you like to throw something at, out, Mike? Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I got a copy of the wetlands permit for the Middletown Avenue site now. Our house is probably maybe 70 feet from the entrance where the equipment is going to go in and out. Uh, I didn't see anything in there about storing of, of the actual equipment. See pipe structures and other uh, solid type of uh, items going in there. And I was told that there was a concern by the town engineer and the Allen Weapons agent of uh, any kind of spillage. So I thought that the uh, storage of the machinery was not going to be there. Could be wrong on that. But uh, again, it, it, it's very close, and that's why I was asking for the screening. And quite honestly, I think you know the arbor vitae and everything like that. It, it, I think it's a good approach, but certainly uh, I think if we had the chain link fence with the screening slats put in there, I think it becomes a little bit easier. And that can be removed afterwards when the project is done. Because again, uh, you know, that property next door to us is, is a great place. We see turkeys, we see coyotes, we see deer in there. I mean, it's, it's really a nice look. So when, when it gets restored and returned back to its natural state, you know, all that stuff can be taken out. So. My head was uh, whether the arbor vitae uh, are putting in there, that's more of a permanent type of screening mm -hmm. where I think we would certainly be satisfied with either one or both. And, and just a, a question about the 55 flood. When that came in, Milton Avenue was completely underwater. We could not get into the house. Our house was the only thing with a little island in a sea of water from there. And it was so deep, the only way we could get to it was by boat. We had to wait until so again, the same issues that you have on flooding on Elm Street certainly apply to Middletown Avenue also because you've got about the same elevation and you're going to have about the same amount of water backing up. So, so Mike, um, in terms of fencing, potential fencing with slats in it, help me understand where that would go. We asked a question about whether security was something that they would want to address anyways. Um, where are you thinking 
Is it is it the first 100 feet of the prop in going in from yeah, the property? I mean, yeah, What's if, they went, if they went back along the property line, go back 100 feet or so, because I think, uh, uh, Lewis, you said that. You well, there's a there's that big big tree big bush there. We're pretty much in front of that, so we pretty much just got to go back to that yeah, that big I, thing. I, I mean, right, I think yeah. that, that would be reasonable because again, I mean, you know, how far do you go with this? We're, right. we're just looking, want to make sure that it, you know that one we can enjoy the property and two that we don't you know lose any prospective buyers simply because of you know the temporary construction project. So yeah, 100, you know, 100 feet or so in it. I'm, I'm sure we could work it out in there, yeah. but I, again, I want to go on the record so that you guys felt some of the concerns that, that I was uh, expressing. Yeah. If, if it became a uh, condition of an approval, would that be acceptable to you then? Sure. Okay. All right. Other questions for the applicant? Right. Truck route for Middletown Avenue, uh, are you going all the way to Route 3 or are you going to take a left on the mill and get to Silas Highway? No, I'm going to take a left on mill. Then go to Silas, go up Silas, take a left, take a right on, on, on Route 3, then go down to Elm. <clears throat> and the vehicles coming in with material either they'll be getting off, uh, you know, they'll be getting off up uh, 99 up that way more, or they'll have to come down to 99 on uh, the uh, 99 exit and come back up that way, you know, if they can't take a left over there off the highway. Going to Elm Street. Yeah. Can't get DLT to get a temporary turn. I doubt it. <laughs> Place. No, no one's ever. Not safe. No one's ever right. turned in the history of that road either. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have uh, two hearings. Let's deal with them separately. Uh, unless one last call, comments. All right. And questions to the applicant. All right. So two different hearings. Could I have some motions, please? Separately. Motion to close both hearings. Or both, I guess. Second, please, somebody. Tony, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Let's we'll deal with the motions separately. <clears throat> Shall we start with Middletown Avenue? I'll go on record as saying it's somebody else's turn. <laughs> <laughs> you can give us the complicated motion. Tony? Yeah, let somebody else uh, learn how to make a motion. motion to, to approve it um, through the application. We're at the Middletown Avenue. Application, uh, uh, number of stipulations. Uh, application number. Which one are we doing? 1947-17-Z. We talked about the screening. Uh, the town. And the adjacent property owner. And, and basically, it's a pre. Housekeeping. The June second, twenty seventeen memo from Peter for for stipulations. Property restoration. Property restoration. Silt fence. Silt fence again. ENS controls. ENS and the rest of the fourth one. Upon completion, private well disturbed areas must be restored to the pre-construction elevations and conditions and the satisfaction of the town. Second. All right. So we have a first and a first and a second by George. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Let's deal with the second one. Do it again, Tony. Last one. Application number 1948-17Z, and the uh, June 2nd memo to uh, planning and zoning from Peter, uh, five stipulations, I won't read them all, uh, but it's stated in the memo, and I believe it's 
offense? No, no not this one. Precondition survey and post condition for the road. Yep. Second. <clears throat> and uh, the first four took care of all the environmental issues anyway, so, okay. Yeah, just a thought on this. I just, Elm Street just it doesn't really set well with me. There are young people in the neighborhood, as Mr. Uh, Anderson cited, and uh, no sidewalks. The road was never designed for in the neighborhood is not accustomed to heavy truck traffic like this. Granted, there are some farmers that have some uh, heavy rigs coming out of there on a very minimal basis. I see a problem when one of the farmers comes out with his oversized load with his harvester on the back, you know, and this guy's, you know, he's a couple feet off on each side. And then they have either delivery coming, you know, the, the guy's not, you know, perfectly on time no one knows when they're coming out of the meadows and you have tracks that's coming down the road there's nowhere for these guys to go you're not back it on route three and uh the road conditions i could see the town getting into a finger pointing you know one of these who broke the road who's going to fix the road you know i understand it's a critical project middletown avenue i wasn't i was comfortable with because within the construction zone i mean that is what it is he's going to be blasting over there he's going to be tunneling going to be doing everything within that construction zone. Elm Street, I'm just not comfortable with. You know, you have an environmental impact there. A lot of people in this town have put a lot of effort in to preserve and protect the meadows. And uh, we, uh, you know, there was just a, uh, there was a tour, I believe, I'm not, you know, of the meadows conservation, that wooded area on the corner of Maple and Middletown. I think they had a tour or some type of event on, I believe it was Sunday, because they were all in that parking lot. And uh, we're lucky to have that over the years. There's been a lot of things tried to be done from dog racetracks on Elm Street to develop it. And it's never, none of that has ever taken any traction. There's been huge resistance in this town. Like I said, I understand the cruciality of this, this uh, project you're working on, but to sacrifice something that we have probably isn't in our best interest. We're gonna rip, strip the topsoil off, stack it, we're gonna have probably 3,000 yards of material when you include the topsoil on the site, that's probably 200 truckloads to get it out of there. And they're gonna make their best effort. But if they had to ever move it, 200 truckloads, in how long? It, Elm Street's not even gonna be there. You know, it's, I just, I'm just not comfortable with it. I know he's stressed on the site, but. So you would say we should vote against it? Is that what you're getting at? I, I am really in good conscience, and I looked at Mr. Anderson and whatnot. You know, I, I can't support it. It's, there's got to be. It's going. It might be difficult, but I think there's a better location. I I don't have it off my cuff, but I'm just not comfortable with it. I agree. At Elm Street, it's extremely narrow. It's mm -hmm. more almost to accommodate a school bus going down the thing with a car. For uh, but nevertheless, he's got to find somewhere else, and that may not be easily done, as he indicated. But he may want to speak to that. And, and you know, it, it, would reduced hours of operation and anything uh, he's uh, assuming that the applicant would do? I thought about that because I'm sure he would do. It, but it just comes down to the magnitude. He needs a lot of material on the site. It's a you know, when he strip, concludes the topsoil, I mean, three thousand yards. In this, it's a lot of traffic in and out of there. Of, we're not talking pickup trucks. We're talking triaxles. These guys, you know, hey, they're going to be going slow because they can't go fast. But you go down that street with a school bus coming the other way. It, you know, or picking up your kids. It even it's just a tight, tight fit. Jim, could could he have a little turnoff about halfway down somewhere that he could the uh, least from somebody? Probably in some of the yard because they're all. Now, I know it's tight in there. It's not, you know, there's no curbs. It's not even, Mr. Anderson said it. I mean, the road's been like that as long as I can tell. Oh, I know. 
Because when they I put the Jehovah, that, if, I know what that was. if you look back in the history, and Mr. Anderson would probably tell you this, when they put the Jehovah Witness Hall in, look how the road's different up to the Jehovah Witness Hall. It's wide and it goes right down. And we have something here, like I said, a lot of people put a lot of effort into preserving it. And I just, that those are just my feelings on it. So, so, you know, the constraints of the access, I, I, I get it, but I also get that there probably aren't any good sites. We're going to say no if he wants to do it, um, you know, knock down the Weight Watcher. No, maybe we'll do that, right? Knock down the Weight Watcher and pile it all there, but we're not going to let him go. <laughs> but there aren't too many places. I was thinking putting it in the Weight Watchers facility on the asphalt in the back. He can, it's already fenced in. There's not enough. There's not enough room Mr. there. Mr. Chairman, can I ask? I can I ask the applicant a question that might help here? No, uh, really, it's can you? No, the George. hearing's closed. George is closed. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> can can you? Uh, can you get another site? We're at Rocky Hill, or you have to. We, work we, 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 I've looked in Weathersfield. I've looked in Rocky Hill. There's, yeah. there's, there's very. What time? So, I, you know, I'm just saying, I'm only one voice here. I, I, I'm not, you know, just, I can't think of a solution, just the impact of this in that neighborhood. The, the heaviest thing coming out of there is Winding Brook's trailer with turf. Each trailer probably once, maybe twice a day at peak season. Maybe. And they're coming out on, in Rocky Hill, they're coming out from three different, three to four different locations they exit. You know, or, you know, a farm for John Deere tractor with the low hay. It just doesn't, and not in keeping with the neighborhood at all. Do you think it'll be beyond the 15 trucks that were testified earlier? I can't speculate to that. It's a bit about 3,000 yards there, and he has to move it in a hurry, attempt to move it in a hurry. It's, it's hey, it's a big project. It's a, you know, it's an invasive project. You know, it, you know, and I'm, it's an invasive project. Right now yes, it's needed. Right. Yes, it's needed. That's. But at whose cost and what cost should, right. you know? But we're voting on 15 trucks. That's what we testified at. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked the question. No one's sitting there going to be counting them. And if well, he's in an emergency, emergency or, situation, or, or I, and the whole thing's an emergency situation. I mean, the catch basin, I mean, the manhole covers. Now, my we're understanding fountains. is that it's, it's three trips uh, or three trucks with each having 15 loads a day. That's 45. Right. 45 and 45 out. Oh. No, you said 15 trips each truck. That's right. what I heard. Right. Around 45. Yeah. And and in and out. And I I I have similar I have similar concerns. It's sort of a damned if you do and damned if you don't kind of situation. Um, I mean, th this is a this is a a, a project with a, you know tremendous public utility. Uh, you know, behind it. Um, uh, I mean, you know, not by utility. I'm not talking about U MDC, but in terms of the public pur public purpose of the project and how that that project, you know, does affect uh, the residents of Weathersfield if it, you know, if it's somehow stalled or or or, or discontinued, not not accomplished. On the other hand, I'm really concerned about the issue of safety and the damages to to the roadway and to adjacent properties with with these heavy loads with this many trips a day, and the and, and the risk to you know, to people on such a narrow road. Um, I, my mind has kind of thought about you know, the possibility of bonding, but that has a lot of disadvantages, and I'm not sure if it's applicable in this situation anyway. So. Um, now, I'm looking, you know, for someone to come up with a, a solution that contains wisdom of Solomon here, and I, I don't see it. I know it's not ideal, but if he has an alternate, it's the emergency site that's in Hartford, where all this stuff he's going to attempt to move it to, I mean, I, I you know, I hate, I, I understand what it means, mileage in a truck and efficiency and costs and all that stuff, but in the greater good of it, but it's at whose expense 
and it, the road's just not set up for it. You know, I can just see it now. To you know, the standoff on this road or on people's front yards, and not that even if you're going to fix it or restore it or whatever, it's just. So, so Peter and Denise, did you help the applicant find potential? Sites? Uh, no, I we we were um, contacted once the sites were selected. I did not uh, give much thought. Uh, you know, as as you were talking, I was going through in my mind where some possible Putting areas the, might be. Piles. Yeah. Peter, would you furniture. want to give the applicant a couple weeks, maybe, on this one to see if there is another sure, sure. alternative? I, I will be voting for this, uh, unlike Jim, I'll be voting against it, and maybe Tom, but uh, I'll tell you, I'll vote for it. I don't like it, but it's the, the uh, answer that probably we have to come up with. But maybe if the town staff pre talks and presses with him on matters and town engineer and so forth, maybe you might come up with a solution. I'll, I'm willing to put it off. My concern was originally in favor of it, but, you know, if... And I, and I admit, I, I usually look at all the sites. I did not look at this site. I, to be honest with you, I looked at every everything else. I've taken rides through other pro potential projects. Um, but if it's a health and safety thing, um, I certainly don't want to see somebody injured because of a, a tractor coming by with a load of hay or corn or whatever it is down that road. I'm familiar with the road. But, I don't know how the our public safety uh, people feel about that uh, application. And all you got to do is get one wheel off the road there because you're in a flood plain. And, uh, you know. So do you think it would be of any value to make an effort to try and help this individual find another property as he indicated i'm not surprised period and said no thanks well, it's, it's i mean he's if if this is not the site you want to approve if he finds another site he's going to have to go through the same process notify neighbors it's a special permit so um i'm more than happy to give some thought to it but he'd have to then reapply if he found a site he'd have to negotiate with the property owner so that's a whole nother process he would have to go through so um you need to just keep that in mind would it hold up the project then? That's what you're saying. I, they have a schedule, and as you heard, he's already starting the getting ready to start the project. So, uh, how critical this is to the project that you know I I can't really, you know it's it's uh, it's at a critical time. But obviously, you've got to review the application on its own merits and deal with it as as you feel you know you need to. So, we have, do we have we don't have a motion just to close here. No, we have a motion. It motion. hasn't motion. been seconded yet. And I also Can thought about saying, okay, give him six I also considered in my mind, let's give him six months, let's give him nine months. Well, you can't pull the carpet out from him in the middle of a, this stop type of project. Well, no, too many people complain, stop what you're doing. That, 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 that is. You know, if you, if you have a motion without prejudice, means he can come right back if, if the, this thing went down to defeat. And, uh, I mean, maybe we could take a vote tonight along those lines. I don't know. What, what are the answers, Mr. Chairman? Uh, well, motion to approve. So we don't think that's right. without prejudice. Oh, right. Okay. right. So, so we do have a, a motion to approve in a second. Um, let's, let's take the vote. Dan, you're out as you have been on the other ones. Okay, as the alternate. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all righty. Uh, again, motion is to approve. So uh, all those in favor, uh, the, again, this is Elm Street, say aye. 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 And maybe just raise your hand for me. So I've got one, Tony, myself. Two, three, four, five. I'll, I'll vote for it. <clears throat> Reluctantly. Reluctantly, six. <laughs> all right. So we have six positives. Start half uh, raising your hand. The, the nays would be... Jim and Rich and Yolanda. You were yeah, I was for. for it. Okay, so it passes six to three. Ready? Get it done quick.
Congratulations. Don't break the house and don't break the road and don't break any people. Do what don't you can. Do what you can about Elm Street, though, as far as that passing. That's serious. George, did you review the minutes? No. no I, read, I read two thirds of them. And we corrected some of them already, but I'm not ready to really want to. I don't want to vote for it. I'm not going to make a motion. If somebody else wants to do it, that's fine. Motion to approve. Ryan? Is that you, Ryan? Thank you. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll make a motion to approve. It's already been done in second for you. Oh, second. Dan, you were here? Okay. Yeah, my only comment is on page 13, you can't have 11 people voting. Also, there are 111 uh, 11, page 11 units on the first page. We corrected that. We did? 11 units. Oh, the same 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So is that really what I said? <laughs> <laughs> and all were participating? Well, we were just doing the hearing at least. Ah, right. We weren't voting, right? Yeah. Okay. All righty. So, Dan, I'd rather you not make a motion. We got enough without you, don't we? Let's stick with the other nine, the other nine people here tonight. We just have to remember that Dan gets to play next time. Yeah, exactly. So, Rich, would you do me a favor and second the motion? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Done. Please check the number of people. No, well, there was no voting, right? But that's the bottom of this one. Just to no continue voting. the hearing. Oh, okay. What else? Anything? Staff. Staff. Staff report a couple of things. Um, the signage subcommittee is meeting for the first time on Thursday. So um, I did advertise it as a special planning and zoning meeting just to ensure no one has a FOI uh, issue with, uh, with that. So uh, you're all certainly welcome to attend that. But I think Dave, Rich, and Dan are the three who are um, planning on attending. I've also invited uh, Bruce Boxtall from the Design Review just so they have an opportunity to, to weigh in on the potential changes to the sign regulations. Uh, additionally, <coughs> this uh, town engineer and I are reviewing our existing site plan and plot plan requirements. Um, the uh, stormwater, the new stormwater requirements that are coming out require that we review some of these regulations for compliance with that. So. Um, we will be providing you with drafts uh, of those changes relatively soon at some point probably in the summertime um, at your next meeting uh, the 1881 Berlin Turnpike the gas station and self storage project that we've talked about a couple times we are uh, hoping is in a position to be heard at that meeting um, so um, that's why it's not listed as pending to be heard at a future meeting because there's still some question on that but nevertheless and then lastly, they, excuse me, did they transfer property over there? I saw it in the current this week. 1881 Berlin Turnpike? Uh, somewhere, I don't think they've transferred over. ownership. Uh, Carmen Anthony's did transfer That's ownership. I thought it might be. Oh, really? What is it? They haven't come in to talk to us about uh, what oh, they want to do. Nothing uh, obvious. Uh, well, yeah. I, it remains yeah. to be seen, but it was highly unusual that they bought the property without talking to us about what they want to do. Somebody must be interested, I hope. Yeah, so there you go, Stock, temporary stockpiles. Uh, lastly, um, uh, lastly, uh, I, uh, when, when Lucky Lou's outdoor patio was uh, last approved back in uh, 2016, there was a condition that staff provide you with an annual report. It's that time to provide you with that annual report. Um, so you should be aware. Uh, so that permit you gave to him until 2021, 
That was one of the conditions. You attached a 10 p.m. limit on Sundays through Thursdays, uh, 11 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, they were still subject to the town noise ordinances. Um, they were required to submit a tree buffer planting plan for approval by town staff. And lastly, the annual report. Uh, we have not yet received the tree buffer planting plan. Uh, I've asked for that a couple of times. Uh, so um, we are still waiting for that. And then uh, you should be aware that during 2016, there were three uh, violations of the noise uh, ordinance. Uh, on June 10th, uh, there was a warning issued by the police department. That was a Friday night at about 1030. On Friday night, June 24th, at close to 11, there was a noise ticket uh, issued, and that was a Friday night. On uh, September 17th, which was a Saturday night at about 1030, there was a noise ticket issued for violation uh, of the noise ordinance. So with those matters uh, in mind, I asked the zoning officer to send uh, Mr. Uh, Kyriakis uh, a uh, certified notice, which he did, um, and indicating you know that they'd violated the noise ordinance uh, three times last year. Please uh, try not to do that uh, in, in, in no uncertain terms. Uh, and uh, that please submit the tree buffer planting plan uh, to our office. He gave him a deadline of May 31st uh, to submit the plan and a deadline of June 30th to have the plantings installed. Uh, as of today, we do not have the plan. Uh, so we did receive a letter from his attorney on May 17th indicating that um, they have every intention of proceeding with the planting plan. Um, somehow they wanted to put the burden on the town to help submit the, you know, prepare the plan, but uh, that's really not our responsibility. The zoning officer did contact the attorney to uh, make that clear to her that it's really their responsibility. They indicated that due to the cool spring and the rain, so uh, I'm not sure why it wasn't submitted last year, but nevertheless, that is the response. Uh, and lastly, my client is diligently adhering to the noise ordinances in order to protect his viable business, which ultimately benefits the town. So per your conditions of approval, uh, I wanted to provide you uh, with that annual report for your uh, information and for your guidance. Thank you. You know, I will say this about Lou, and I'll say it publicly. I think he thinks because he rents or leases from the town at the, our public building so, that somehow we, we should be assisting him in some way. I'm not sure I agree with him on that, but that's part of, I think, this issue. But maybe I'm wrong. I hope he comes through for you. Hope him through. I guess my, my thought is that if you don't see anything by the end of June, maybe we can do something more than a yeah, I, I think since we established some specific di uh, deadlines which have come and gone uh, that uh, the next order of business, and obviously it's up to the zoning officer, is uh, the issuance of fines. Uh, those seem to get people's attention much faster than just letters uh, pointing out um, you know, some inconsistency. So that, is, that would normally be uh, the next step. And then after that, I, we, I would bring it back to you guys to see if you wanted to take further action uh, in terms of the status of his permit. And just uh, for the record, I believe uh, the neighbor uh, who has been uh, monitoring this is, is, is in the audience tonight and uh, un under public uh, comment, she may, may want to add and or follow up to that. Well, with that said, right? Maria Spala, 36 Marsh Street. I think you've seen me here for now for five years. It's the same story. I mean, the trees were supposed to be planted actually three years ago. 
And, you know, now we're at this, he doesn't even have, you know, a plan available. And he started playing already. This year he's playing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So Thursday I had to call the police already. Uh, unfortunately, the second I hung up, he stopped playing. So, I mean, this is just an absolute nightmare for me, absolute nightmare. If he played within the town ordinance and planted the trees, we could live, you know, we could cohabit here. But he refuses to do that. So I'm responsible for calling the police all the time. And the fact is, even if I don't do it, so if, you know, like on a couple of nights I'm just tired or I don't want to deal with the police, um, what happens is it just gets louder. It's like a, you know, a spoiled child. No one's watching. I'll just keep get lo getting louder and louder and not do anything about it. And you can tell the second it gets dark, the music gets louder and louder. And then if he sees the police cars come through, then he lowers the, the volume. It's a game. You know, and it's like, I live there. I'm a taxpayer. I, there's no way I can escape this. And now, like I said, f four nights out of the week. And it's for four hours. It's constant pounding, loud noise. Most of the time, I can't even hear my TV. It's ridiculous. I have a three-season porch. I can't even sit on the three-season porch. Five months of the year now with him. And it, and, and it all boils down to if he would just be responsible, then I, I wouldn't have any complaints. I wouldn't like it, but I wouldn't have any complaints. And the times that he plays within the ordinance, it's manageable. It's just that it stays that at that point for maybe an hour, and he goes beyond it. And so last year you gave him a five-year permit, and so he thought, well, he's on Easy Street now, and so the complaints. And there would have been more, but sometimes I'm out on those nights when he's playing. It, it, it's, it's absolutely untenable. I mean, I, I can't imagine any of you playing, uh, buying a house, not knowing this, and then having to listen to loud pounding music and calling the police all the time. So my feeling is he, do, he doesn't, I mean, tickets do nothing. It's the cost of business, business for him. The, 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 their nominal amount doesn't affect his behavior whatsoever. My feeling would be at this point where he's not even bothered to plant the trees, or comply with the ordinances on a regular basis, that, he, that you start pulling the permit for 15 or 30 days at a time. So it really affects him and motivates him to at least be a good citizen and participate responsibly in this. I mean, this in my mind was a privilege to try out music in that area. And again, if he cooperated, you know, it might have in my mind been semi-successful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is, there, is this open for discussion? Or? Yeah, it's open. Sure. It's like, so, like, if he. It's easy there. <laughs> if um, we, would, we would bring somebody like that in because, you know, this is somebody who's not listening to. So there is a. Say, okay, now it's nine there's such a thing as a show cause hearing mm -hmm. where we a zoning officer would issue him uh, uh, an order uh, giving him the opportunity to appear in front of this commission uh, for consideration of revoking the permit modifying the conditions and or whatever other actions you might want to uh, apply so he would be given the opportunity to come in and explain his situation, why he feels he's entitled to continue as a permit, and then also uh, providing the public with the opportunity to either refute or agree with what it is he's saying. So that is uh, a tool available uh, at the appropriate we used time. I, you haven't used it since I've been here. I've, I've used it in other other towns, um, but um, oh, definitely, yeah. Does it work? Well, if you revoke his permit. He doesn't have a permit, so he's not entitled to do what he's could doing. You, could so you use that process to modify the permit. And yeah, say, sure. Because I'd rather, I'd rather say, okay, stop playing at nine, so that the musicians who are booked for yep. the summer yep. aren't kind of left scrambling. Yeah, I mean, he would be issued an order that would say this show cause hearing is being held for the purposes of A, B, C, D, or all of the above. I just didn't know if there was a, if it was only like 
all on or all off, or if we can bring. No, it you can modify it. You could revoke the whole thing. I mean, so right. roll it back, whatever you see fit. So that's certainly uh, uh, on the menu if 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 that's the way um, wants to go. So is that something you might <coughs> put in this fine? Uh, Start with fines and then. Let, let him know. I mean, the, the, the order that was issued to him, the fines are as much as $150 a day. Um, it's a decent, uh, so, yeah, that adds up uh, pretty quick. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if it's continuing in violation until he complies, um, I don't know if that would get his attention. But, yeah, revoking the permit, clearly, uh, I mean, that's a, you know, he's, he's the only game in town in terms of the outdoor entertainment venues. So uh, um, I guess we have to, we'll have to see what, the response is and you know what his uh, reaction to it is and then kick it up uh, kick it up again so if need be maybe good weather coming up for him but also planting time is here now. yes that was why we gave him the deadlines that we did so that he, we he give us a plan we would have time to review it and then he could plant the whatever it is before the weather uh, turns for the worst That's in terms right, of the hot weather everything would have grown very well. yes it would have he's already open oh no definitely he's, he's open so So Peter, your motion, getting late. Yeah. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Great. Anybody opposed to that? <laughs> <laughs> motion to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> motion to go home.